You ready to go, man? I'm ready. All right, cool, cool. Let me get right into it, man. All right, what's going on out there, YouTube? It's gonna be Donnie coming to you from Masawa Japan, Panku Style. I uh, got one of the one of everybody. Everybody that comes to my show will say they're special, man, because everybody is a special part of my life, man. But this particular man right here, we got right here, is one of the really special guys in my life, and many thousands of other young men out there, man. It's gonna be uh, Coach Dante Jones. I'm 37 years old. Not sure what your age is, uh, Coach Jones, man. But it's like it's 44. 44. But you know, one thing about you know, get right into it, man. <laughs> The philosophy of why guys like you know because again we our, our relationship was you know coach to player right. uh, and we didn't get the chance to really hang out man so it's like until you get to that point I still call coach white coach white boys everybody the same way and this uh, why why do you think that's a uh, getting right into it man why is it I mean, um, yeah. why is it that you know dudes no matter how old you are you still a coach it's the re it's the respect <laughs> yeah. you know? like I say I, I, right now if if I hear somebody say call coach Pete. Call him Pete or call him Pompey. Like I have a problem. With it. Yeah, I mean because, like I say, that's coach. Like, yeah. like <laughs> when, when you earn that title and you put in that work, you know what I mean, and, and, and you love the, what you do. Like I say, it's a title you earn, and, and it's, it's it's a sense of respect, you know, and, and that's how it is. Yeah, yeah, man. So that's that's one thing. Cause everybody's like, man, why you you calling this dude coach? And you ain't, you ain't seen him in like almost damn 20, 20 years, man. But, but yeah, man, like I say, man, just like right in the beginning, cause you know, the, the, we'll, we'll talk for a little bit, but in the beginning, man, just, I want to let people out there know, man, again, I, you know, I had, my dad was around, but we were separated and um, you guys, man, uh, coaches, um, I'm pretty sure you guys hear it a lot, man, but you guys are very inspirational and uh, guys, guys is life, especially those who um, honestly would come to be, to be blunt coming from where we come from Baltimore city, man, you know how mm -hmm. it is. We all know how it is out there and to get out of there, just to be living in, in a productive citizen in in a, in a, in a world is is successful awesome. success right yeah. there. So a lot of people, a lot of people, yeah, people don't understand. Like coming from Baltimore is just different. Yeah, you know, like like literally, you you you. I've seen so much talent go the wrong way. Yeah, and it, it's just it's just a, it's a beast. Like people are like Baltimore is a beast. Yeah, you know. And it, and it devours, you know, and, and that's why one thing we always did, we did so much to keep y'all on track, to keep y'all around each other, to keep y'all away from that, you know. Uh, and one thing I love about the parents that we had up at Emerson, one thing they realized is they ain't care how late we kept y'all because their mindset yeah. is with them, y'all not in the streets, you know. So if we all there at 9, 9 30, 10 o'clock, they don't care yeah. because they not at, you know. And, and parents, and one of the things the parents we always say is they drop kids off August 15th, they get them back in December, yeah. you know. Yeah, that was the goal. yeah, and I mean that, that's how it worked, man. Because uh, August, like I said, my first time ever playing ball was uh, August fifteenth, two thousand, what, two thousand, two thousand. Because I didn't, okay. I, I lived in, uh, we, I'm, I'm born in, uh, I was born in East Coast, East, not East Coast, East Baltimore, Sedonia, Saint Clair uh, Lane. Okay, and, and then uh, we, my mom, she went to Gaucher College or whatever, and like she, my mom just kind of had the foresight to get us out of East Baltimore, and we got, okay. a, we got over towards uh, West Baltimore, like near, um. Uh, near or Northwestern, we we were there first, okay. and then okay. I, I went to uh, Foster uh, Middle School, which is right by okay. Pimlico, and then mm -hmm. you know, of course, then and went to Emerson and everything, man. So the only thing he sucked about the west, the west side was all the teams, the the, the Northwood, all the guys were on the east east side. So that's <laughs> everybody wanted to play for Northwood, or, or, you know, so it's like, man, like I don't want to play for these guys. It was no teams that I knew um, over in the west. I remember. Uh, 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 Al Sindor, he played for the, I forgot the team he played for over there by was by the Emerson. What's that? Uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah, Rhino Heights. Yeah, Rhino Heights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he played over there, but I mean, at that, by that time I was already it was high school, and that's why I met right. I met Al Sindor the summer before I went to um a couple of summers before I went to Emerson because we we worked together actually before we ever okay. played. Yeah, we worked together the summer jobs and everything. But man, before we like before we get into my story, man, which I'm not going to get into, man, for you, man. I mean, I know you know you're you're Dunbar poet, and things like that, man. So, like, what your progression as a player? Like, what what did you where did you start from, and then you know, what was your, the highest level you got to in uh, football? Well, as a player, like I, I started playing baseball. Okay. I played baseball from probably five or six until twelve. I, that's the only 
that's the only sport I really played. I played football and, and basketball and, and around the way, right. but for a team, it was strict, strictly baseball. So when I was 12, I started playing football. I started playing up Northwood. That's why you mm-hmm. mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. I at Northwood, you know? So I played at Northwood. I mean, you know, we won championships every year. And it's crazy. this is what I told people about the game of football, and I had no problem telling my story. When I started playing football, I was horrible. Mm. Horrible. Like, and they, they, I was, I was my, I was the kid who had, had got this five plays. That's it. You know what I mean? I was bad. My first year, I mean, I was because not, not really playing till twelve. People realize that that's kind of late back right. then. Right. You know what I mean? So I get there, and then these kids been playing since six, seven years old. You know, kids. I mean, they, they were. I didn't understand the game. I, I was a baseball. Right. So right. I went through the first couple of years, like get my five plays. You know, then I came back, and it's finally once I got to. You know, uh, my got to play for a coach named Herb. But I say uh, Herb gave me the confidence to be this to be where I am right now. You know, because when I first started, I was just uh, I started playing outside linebacker. You know, I wasn't the most aggressive. Mm. So Herb seen it. So we in practice one time. He said, "Come here, come here, yo." He put me a <laughs> nose guard. I said, "Nose guard." No, I heard I play out there. I'm, I'm, I'm in space. I use my hands. Right. Now he made me play. He made me play nose guard every practice the whole season, mm. and that just brought that toughness to it. You know what I mean? So we, and we got into it, and that was we play offense until I got to Herb. Herb said you're gonna play tight end. That's all right, but you know what I mean? I block him, but it's cool. We get in the first game. He called. He called sixty one X pass. <laughs> I'm gonna sign. Like, Yo, that's to me. I don't do that. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm gonna block a little bit. I'm gonna play my defense. Right. I mean, caught it. I scored. You know what I mean? It was just, you know, exciting. Mm-hmm. You know, but he had confidence. I remember um, it was one game. Rest in peace, big uh, fat Antoine. He was our starting quarterback. Gary Smith was our backup. I was the third string quarterback, but I started at tight end. Right. So I used to play every game because he was a blow teams up. Antoine was hurt. Gary was overweight. So I'm like, all right, you know, Herb was like, all right, it's you, man. I'm like, all right, bet. We're going to go ahead and hand this ball off, run this team up out of here. But well, we started off every game with a bone. Our, our receiver was Tommy Polly, you know what I mean? All NFL, Florida State. So, I mean, yeah, 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 so yeah. It, it was a bomb to Tommy. So he, he looked at me, I'm like, all right, what's the play? 44 wham, let's get this play. He's like, no, nah, you know what it is. I'm looking like, Herb, this ain't what I do. <laughs> I might get a quarterback, it's all handoffs. Right. You know what I mean? Because we'd be up so much that we can't throw the ball. So I said, all right. I lined up on the center. I remember like yesterday, and the team was like, he ain't the quarterback. I'm thinking like, how they know? Now, I understand I had number 88 on my chest. <laughs> it did give away. Yeah. So I dropped back. I just threw the ball as far as I can. Bam, the touchdown. I'm like, <laughs> it worked. Bet. Let's hand this ball off. Get my get these three touchdowns. So come on. We get the ball back. He looked at me again and said, you know what it is? I'm like, no, nah, I heard me and understand it. That first one was a mistake. Yeah, I just yeah, threw yeah. it. I don't know where I was throwing it. Get back, drop back, throw it again. Touchdown. All right, back. Cool. That's two passes. I'm good. Let's run this last touchdown. Third time we get the ball back, looked over for the play. Did it again. You know what it is. Three touchdowns, three. (laughs) But his mindset was, I'm going to make you, I'm going to bring somebody out of you that you ain't know. Right. And a lot of people, why I dive into kids so hard and I I see stuff in kids that other people don't, it's because of that. Mm He's seen something. That, you know, I was just, I mean, really, I started off, I was terrible. Right. The progression of good coaching and people just pushing and pushing and pushing until that light came on. And once it came on, I mean, you know, I, I, I was good ever since then, you know. Right. And it was that. And also, you know, my, my father, probably when, when football became real for me, was probably, I was like playing like 11, 13, right before I got to her. Mm-hmm. The scrimmage, you know, you know, I'm just out there. All right, man, look, I'm standing out of the way. Just trying to you know me straight, stay clean. I wasn't trying to get no. <laughs> so after the practice, my father says, walk across this field. So we used to practice, we used to practice at Mervo. You know, okay. Mervo had no lights back yeah, then. Yeah. So he walks across towards Hill and Road. So I'm over there in this dock and I'm looking around like, hey, what's up, Pop? He said, oh, get in your stance. I said, I didn't show my father how I get in this stance. He was like, you know, when I say fire out, come out your stand. Bet. He said, go, I fired out. He hit me with the meanest form I ever felt in my life. <laughs> I mean, when I say floor me, yeah. I'm sitting there, I got my eyes watery. I'm on the ground like, yo, what's that for? Yeah. He said, get in your stance again. I'm like, no, nah, man, last time I got this stance, <laughs> <laughs> it ain't end well. So you know, I got my stance again. Once again, he said, you know, come off. Fire. He said, go, hit me with another form. 
So I'm sitting there now. I got tears in my eyes, and he says something. And, and I promise you, through my whole career, I'm a Division One college football player, and all I can think of is what he said. He said, "Don't ever embarrass me like that again." Right. But a college player, if I missed a tackle, I wasn't mad at nothing the coach could say. I wasn't mad at nothing the team could say. All I was thinking about is embarrassing my father. Right. And I, I mean, I'm 23 years old, a senior in college, all conference. All I can think about is him. You know what I mean? Right, right, like I say, and what he instilled to me. So like I say, a lot I he was my first coach. Like that why why I got into coaching? Because my father. My father was the, the guy in the neighborhood who used to pick all the kids up in the van and take them to Montebello and John. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Take them down. He started the baseball team. You know, I had Antonio Freeman played on my, my father baseball team, my brothers. You know what I mean? That, he he was just that guy who did everything for the kids in the neighborhood. Hmm. So a lot of things you see in me, it's just me just emulating the greatness that came before me. Roger that. Yeah, man, that's one again. For that's you know what you. I mean, all all coaches, you know, they play their parts, man. But then, just like there's players, man. To, again, to be to be blunt and honest, man, there's coach. There's different levels of coaches, man. And the one thing is, the one thing it was, uh, it was uh, apparent about you because I, I met. I think I I first seen you at MSU. You had the dreads. This was real yeah. about um. I, I was already on, yeah yeah two thousand because it was at, yeah same 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 time because I was, I played I played that uh, first. Well, I played that first my first year uh, JV, and then you know mm -hmm. they pick up the they pick up the prospects mm -hmm. from there, and I, I walked on to uh, varsity in the end of the year playoffs. I think we playing Hereford, I believe. I can't remember, man. Right. But right. um, yeah, man, I seen you, and I, I didn't. I mean, of course, I, I all I knew was you know, Coach Pete and all those guys there, and then I, you were kind of like you were there, but you like weren't. I could man, I could I could sense the or the aura coming off you, but like that when uh. you first came there, it was like you were just kind of like seemed like you were scoping it out. And then like, it. and then you kind of like the, then the next season you were like, bam, running JV and JV did a one in the eighty degrees turn and everything. I'm like, man, who's this guy, man? And then, and then and like, it yeah, and it's like that's Coach Jones, man. And dudes talking about you know talking about your your college days and you know stuff like that, man. I was like, all right, cool, man. And it, it was like you know, instant, instant, instant turnaround from where it was. And again, man, it was the Ooh. same. It was the same. It ain't like we got a bunch of free agents in. It was the same kids. Same, yeah. <laughs> it's the same kids. It's just the way you the way you went about it, man. And um, that's the the reason why. Again, a lot of guys out there don't realize that guys that are not in the sports. And then also, we'll get into your your own your own kids now. Like being you know being a, a coach of of kids, letting them kids being coached by the coaches is another thing too. So we'll we'll talk about that. Cause yeah. I know that's something. You, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. So. As far as you like, you, you go to high school and everything. Then you go to uh, how was the uh, transition from high school uh, to college for you uh, for ball wise and everything? It was uh, it was it, it was different. Like I say, right. coming, you know, and so, like we went like, going to Dunbar. Like you say, a basketball powerhouse. You know, we are the ones who turned Dunbar from a basketball school to a football school, right. and it's still a football school now. So we we come in. You know, we we first year, my junior year, my sophomore year. We play, I played JV, you know, we all, I think we lose the uh, city championship to Patterson. Mm -hmm. That was my brother and senior year. They had a good year. Next year, I moved up to Varsity, starting on Varsity. We go to the semifinals. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are a game away from the state. You know, we lost to Overly. Mm -hmm. They come back my, my senior year, it was just like, my junior year was the year we had to have that transition going to, with Coach Pete. When okay. Coach Pete left with Dunbar and went to Emerson. Okay. And the reason why people don't realize we had a state championship my my eleventh grade year, hands down, all the talent was there. The problem was the team was divided. Mm. You had Coach Pete Boys, and then we had Coach Stan Boys. Uh, you know what I mean? And what it was is because you know the school was telling, "Oh, Coach Pete may come back." You know, so some people just wasn't buying into Coach. Coach Stan was a great coach. Mm. You no, know, hands down, great coach, great guy. But you know, when you got kids, kids are very you know impressionable, right? right you right. know, and you got alumni now here telling us, "Don't worry, you know, Coach Pete be back next week." So next week, next week, it just kept going on. So you got some people who never really were buying the coach stand. So that was that diversity. Then coming into my senior year, it was already set that you know, our, our coach not coming back. This coach stand team, let's go. So we just bought in and we just, I mean, we just turned it up, you know, and we went through. And sometimes it takes a, all that great stuff we did that year. People don't realize our last scrimmage, we scrimmaged a team that was not good. So mm. we, we, we scrimmaged Calvary Hall, we ran through them. Mm. We scrimmaged City, we ran through them. Like, we were just punishing people. We scrimmaged Southern High School. Oh, man. I can't name one person <laughs> on Southern High School team, and they beat the living shit out of us. Yeah. Like, they ran through us to the point where we looked at each other like, 
yo, I, I thought we was good. Yeah. But sometimes you need that that humbling experience. And from that point, you just we punished everybody. You know, and I, like I say, I had interest from different places, but you know, we had Tommy Pilot. Tommy had everybody in the country come and see him. Right. And I tell kids, you are not always going to be that guy. So when, when when you got somebody who bringing people in, all you got to do is keep shining, and some people will see you. So I went from Dell State. I mean, I went from uh, Dunbar, graduated, went to Dell State. My brother was already up there. You know, walked into it. That was a situation of like, wow. I mean, I mean, in my mindset, because I played outside linebacker in high right. school. I'm 6'2", 163 pounds. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? That yeah. is, in my mind, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm good. We'll linebacker. Um, yeah. I went to a spring game. <laughs> I go to a spring game. And when I seen these grown men playing linebacker at Dell State. Yeah. I'm sitting there like my I'm, I'm watching like oh, yo. Okay, I, I know, the, I know I mean, the feeling, man. Yeah. Three, six, four, two forty-five, two. I mean, they was grown, grown. Yeah. So I bet I'm I get I get to Dell State. I'm doing my I'm undersized, but my thing is, what made me different was this. Like I use my brain. Right. You know what I mean? I I know I can't overpower everything, so I'm gonna beat you to the spot. Right. You know. What I mean? so I, that's what I did. I remember we had different practices, and they you know they try to use us as the little stunt dummies. And I remember the co- one coach, Coach Henry. I'm gonna call you up, Coach Henry. Gonna tell me he blitzed this gap. Oh, so man. they happened. I blitzed the gap, hit the running back in the backfield. He gonna tell me, no, do it again. No, you can't blitz that fast. <laughs> you need to take me out because you think I'm gonna walk so through this gap and I know this guard because we, we ran the wing T. Right. I know coming. I'm not letting this man knock my head off. No. Mm-hmm. So go through. As I went through my freshman year, now playing outside, we had in our scrimmage as a freshman, they gave freshmen five plays. I had two tackles, three tackles, and a pass breakup. You know what I mean? So I'm on, I'm on it like, man, look, everybody like, yeah, you know, but I'm still in my freshman year at 163, <laughs> left at 163, and gained no weight. So it was, I uh, met, met a guy named Jason Williams. He was start free safety. Mm-hmm. Jason, Jason was all world. I mean, he was, he was the truth. And it was like, um, he said, hey, son, son. He's called me son, son. Hey, son, son. <laughs> you're going to be the smallest safeties than me at. I said, safeties? I said, Jason, I play linebacker. He said, all right, son, son. I tapped him on my back and walked away. <laughs> so I'm sitting there thinking like, what that mean? You know, you know, next year, I move to safety. You know what I mean? So right. my transition, like I say, and I tell kids, when you get to college, you got to find something to latch on to. Right. You know what I mean? That, that upper class that's born and learn. Like, you can't always go in and you can't be an island. Too many people want to be an island. No, you, you, it's hard to be an island. Right. You know, be yourself, but find something that. And he was great. I mean, he he he, he taught me so much, and he set both of us back in some ways too. Because Jason was the one straight ball, but didn't lift weights. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? My thing is, oh man, <laughs> if you can ball not lift weight, that's like my type of player. Right. So <laughs> his senior year, we both started. He, he started living, so I started living. So I mean, it, it was a great thing, though. So my transition wasn't hard. Mm. It was. So, like I said, I go in my freshman year on the field. My, I think my brother at that time might have been a junior field. Omar Parker played. I don't know about what it was. He was like a junior. So, I, I was just trying to get myself on the field. You know what I mean? So, I would, I would be in practice working hard. You know, that's, that's me. My mindset is when I want something, I'm going to go get it. Right. So, all right. But I wasn't a scholarship athlete at that time. Mm. So, with my father my, and my father, my father's a G. He told him up there, look, if, if my son touched the field, y'all going to pay him. So that mindset was, well, you're going to keep him on the field. You know what I mean? So I'm going, I'm working hard. Like, we, Jason got hurt. He played every safety we had except me. And, I, and I, not, besides Jay Will, Jason was the only safety out there that was better than him. Right. The rest of them played every safety. Now I'm sitting there like, oh, my. So it got so bad, we went into a Morgan game, and Omar played offense. So that week, Omar said, this is what I'm going to do, Tay. I'm coming up the huddle. I'm telling you all the plays. So I'm making, I'm, I'm literally making every tackle in practice. <laughs> I mean, pass, he's he, he telling me everything. Like, they, you know, um, and the way until they got what they call Sally is a double handoff. Right, right. And free safety. I made a tackle on Sally's in the backfield from the free. <laughs> they stopped the play. They, hold up. Hold up. Who is that? They were like, it's a free safety. Oh, God damn it, the play can't work there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but, but like I was doing whatever I, I was determined, but you know it, it didn't happen. Right. The whole year they, they still wouldn't play him. Coming to sophomore year, we got new coaches. So the new coaches came in and like I say, it was a brand new playing field. Right, right. I'm in. You know, I'm working hard. I'm mean, like saying my thing is, 
always in the back of my mind. My father driving up pain. I'm not playing. To me, that's embarrassing. Right. I can't the phone. So I'm going to practice. I'm going hard. A, and a, they had a safety, another safety that was starting in front of me. Rick was bigger than me. Mm. So at that time, probably my sophomore year, I probably was, I was 6'2", probably 185. Mm. Like 205, 210. So he was a bigger, you know what I mean? And he wasn't more physical than me, but he looked the part. That's my guy. But he, he looked the part. So we go in and, and, you know, we would get down the goal line stuff. And Rick was like, yo, tell you what, go in. Man, anything to get me on the fit, man, I'm out there. So I'm yeah. going hard, going hard. You know, our first game come, um, they got him started. I, I was backing up. I was a backup free and strong. So, I mean, we go on, we playing Cheney the first game. I'm excited. We have a little um, back to school, uh, con- something, show or something. So I'm in the student center, I mean, uh, EH, and, you know, I'm walking on the steps. Everybody got the Tim's on, untied. Twist my damn ankle coming down the steps. Oh, man. I ain't going to listen. But you know what? Nothing going to stop me from right. that. I ain't telling nobody. I iced it. Wrap I it take up. The whole kit. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm out there. I'm in pain, but I don't care. Yeah. So first half, he started. Bam. The second half, they come. It was like, oh, you know, you're going in. That was it. Never looked from that point on. Next week in practice, I'm one. They moved me to start free. They moved Jason to start strong. That was history. Like, I, I never looked back from there, you know. Yeah. I, always, I tell kids that it was built to me is once I take, once I get on the field, I'm never coming off. You know what I mean? I don't care what injury. Like, I tell these kids, like, it don't matter. You know what I mean? I broke the tip of my finger off the first quarter one game. Take my finger. I put I put my gloves on. Take my finger together. And I played. Yeah. And went to the train like, it's something wrong. He said, oh, yeah, the shit's broke. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like it, it was not a. My thing is sitting on that sideline is embarrassing my fault. Right. So no matter what, I mean, I twist my ankle. I mean, my 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 shoulder was my senior year first contact. My shoulder be dead. Like I mean, it was. It don't matter though. You know what I mean? I knew what was gonna happen. I learned how to play through pain. You know what I mean? It wasn't until the the, the the season over with my head coach. Like I guess he talked to the trainer. And he didn't know how bad I was. And going to the training room was embarrassing for me. So the trainer would come in at five o'clock. I would meet him at five o'clock. Being there by myself, like I didn't want people to see me in the training room because I, I thought it was signs of weakness. Right, right. So I go there at five o'clock, get all my treatment. My ankle messed up, my shoulder. You know what I mean? And I'll be gone. So while people going there during the daytime, people never see me in the training room. Like I refuse to let people see that. But that, that's, that's why I teach these kids. Like when you out there, you can't like like I tell tell yourself you're never too good to be hurt. Right. Say so once you 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 hurt. Somebody coming in, you know what I mean? You look at all these college players, NFL players who get hurt, then somebody coming and start balling. Right, you yeah. never see the field again. I, that's my fear. I never, and that field was enough to drive me to stay injury free even when I was hurt. Right. Yeah, man, that's definitely that's definitely a real thing, man. And that, like, you know, definitely one thing I take about take out of that is just like the uh, what they say all the time, the uh, you know preparation opportunity, the preparation and the opportunity. Uh, is where you know mm-hmm. bring success and everything. So you could have been like, nah, man, I'm gonna go ahead and ride this out and and nurse my ankle, and then you know, <laughs> which you all, all you just said wouldn't it, wouldn't it happen because they'll put somebody nope. else in, and the other dude is ready for this chance too. And that's what exactly. that's the way I, you know. And, and again, taking all this stuff I learned from there at Emerson and uh, stuff I picked up in Maryland, man, it's like where I'm at, where where while I'm at, where I'm at in my life right now. It's just like mm-hmm. um, this grinding and pushing past where other people quit, man. And that's the only thing that mm-hmm. makes you. Uh, better so like you know right now i'm living in japan running my my business like mm. i'm the only black i'm the only well number one i'm the only black guy in in all japan running a running a business so that's one thing number two mm. i'm the only american on the whole mainland running a uh running my business american wise performance shop and and the and that stuff i picked up out there man and the way i kind of I, I meet people and interact with them man being from baltimore the street smarts we, we gain on top of like, you mm-hmm. know, the smarts and everything you gain from college and all that good stuff. It's like, they don't know how to read you. Cause like I, I can be, I can be nice and cordial. And then soon, yep. as, soon as you say something wrong, it's like not, not trying to be a, a dick to people, but it's like, Hey man, I, be, I was taught by, by, by grown men, by you, by you guys, man. Like don't, mm-hmm. number one, don't play with adults and know, yep. know your role, know your lane and everything. And when guys come out of my, come from Wisconsin or whatever, like, Hey man, look, this is how adults interact. And this is why, you know, when when coaches when coaches were talking, you didn't run up into a coach huddle and just start talking. Hey, you waited for those coaches to finish talking. Then you go over there. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. one of the things, Coach Peter tell you, hey man, back up or shut up or whatever. Like, hey man, yeah. we talking right here. Let's let the coaches talk, and then when we got time for us, we'll talk to you. So a lot of people don't get that, man. And like it's it's 
it's you no know, football is a big thing. Of course, that's why we're all there. But it's the life yeah. lessons that we learned, man. The August fifteenth, when you get that old Modi shoulder pads, like you, you got to work with them. You, well, you, get, you, yeah. got, you got to pit them on. You spray them off or whatever. You pit, you, call, you, you pit them on. Go out there and play, man. And that's that, that character that uh, a lot of guys. That unfortunately, not, I'm not saying it's not unfortunate they're not from that, but it just gives us that thicker skin. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, then you know me going to Iraq and everything, man. It's like that stuff plus Iraq plus being from Baltimore. It ain't much that's gonna rattle me, man. It, it's not. It. It's not much that's gonna that's rattle me, and that goes towards like now. I'm not. I, I do martial arts, man. I'm pretty hot in martial arts, and um, if it wasn't yeah. for cars, I'd probably be fighting MMA and everything. But I do that. So that that stuff right there, man. When you get in those tough moments where somebody's about to tap you, I'm like, nah, man. August fifteenth, hot as hell. Two days that big hill. That, this ain't nothing right here, man. You know what I mean? Man, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's as an adult, it's decisions we I, I still make that right. goes back to football and summer practice and being down and being hurt and you know what I mean running and like I say, I, in high school we had a coach that Coach Stain is trying to kill us. Right. Like like that's back when. You ain't had water breaks. Yeah, like, so yeah. <laughs> everything, no water breaks, no nothing. Like, but it, it made us like little soldiers. Yeah, you know. And, 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 and I've been beat down and, and come back. Right. And that's a learned in life. Like, it's, as an adult, this thing is gonna happen. You can't just, oh man, the, the car messed up and, and, and this happened and that happened. You just can't quit. Right. Oh, and I can say that that process it, it, it just grows. And one thing about coming from Baltimore. It's hard, people hard to read. It's easy to read just somebody who just have a Baltimore mindset, right. just a hood mindset. Right, right. But when you got the hood mindset, but you got the brain and that's <laughs> that's scary, right? Because we can enter any realm, yeah. sit down, business, business, and tie, and talk that same language to them folks, and then we go on the corner and talk that and talk their language. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, being yeah. able to be a chameleon, right. you know what I mean? We, we can we can fit in every world. That that that's what because people want to label you. They want to look at it and say, "Oh, you got a mohawk. You you belong over there, and that's it." Yeah. Now over there, because I can be over here. I can go to this business meeting. I can go to the hood. You know what I mean? I go strip club. I go anywhere and and, and fit and understand and be good. Mm-hmm. And that's what's great. Right. But that's, that's that's why you gotta you gotta have a lot of different sides of yourself. You just can't be one way because one way gonna get you one lane of money. Right. You got multiple ways you can get multiple lanes of income. You can deal with multiple different people, and that's major when you're trying to be great. Yeah, man, no doubt, man. That's again, that's the, the another that's another big thing, man. Is it's been multifaceted because you know, in a, in a football thing, thing kind of going back a little bit for me. Um, I again, I came, I came into Emerson that summer 2000. Again, I, I had Jason Murphy on here, man. Jason there. Danny, Raytron, Leak, all these, all these guys. And at that time, you know, what I mean, I felt like I was. Everybody's calling me big guy and everything because I was lifting weights at fourteen, taking creatine. So I was big. Uh, I was getting bigger. And then I got there, I'm like, man, these dudes, man. You know, what I mean, and then I get, I get to college, and you got Sean Ramey and Vernon Davis. I'm like, man, these guys. I'm like, so it started over. But when I got to Emerson, man, it was just like, um, you know, I played. We played a lot of street ball out there, and and, and you know, like play ball they call it rugby, or whatever. We just play, you know, no, you know, contact football with no pads out there. We just, that's how yeah. we do it. So you know, one thing I used to do, I used to model, I used, Barry Sanders and, and uh, Natron Means were my guys. Okay. Like Emmitt Smith. They were, I, I wanted to be a running back. That's all. When I got to Emmitt, I'm like, man, how do you be a running back or whatever? So number one, the first day of practice, I, like I told Jason, I, I didn't even finish that man, and that right there was a. That right, I, I left. Uh, I left the midday summer practice. I didn't even make it out of calisthenics, man, because I I never uh, played football, never played any uh, organized sport. So I came there. I didn't. I didn't hydrate, which is a big thing out there, guys watching. Right. I didn't. I had no hydration, zero water. I took uh, some creatine that morning, so all that acid. Yeah, build up, built up. Yeah. up. I mean, I'm burping out. The, I'm burping it out, man. Then I got boots on. I got. Uh, I got these swishy pants on. Sweating the side of the yeah. loose, <laughs> and I'm like, so I'm like, dude, everything is wrong. And, and it's like it's 85 degrees. The sun is out. We're on a baseball field, no shade, and uh, no shade. We're doing the calisthenics, man. I already start feeling woozy, and then by the time we get into like the the, the drills, I'm like, I'm done, man. I just, I like, I just, man. I know they see me, and they be like, man, whatever. I walked away alongside of the building for like uh, those two weeks, so I missed the whole summer practice, and then like I, I uh, all that summer, man. I just kept seeing like Lord Giants was coming on and all this other, all this football okay. stuff was just like everything I'm seeing is football. I'm like, dude, I can't. And and that was, you know, for me, that was a that was something that that showed me, man. Like, you know, even though like 
in t- inside, you can say what you want, man. But you know when you're not a quitter, man. Like I said, what your dad yeah. did for you, yeah. put you in. I didn't have nobody like that to like hit, check me or whatever because nobody even knew I was going out there. But so I was like, mm-hmm. man, th- this is not me, man. So I went, I went to uh, Coach Pete. I went in his office. I was like, hey, uh, Coach Pete, you got a second? I was like, yeah, hey, I'm the guy that um. I'm the guy that left the way. He's like, yeah, I seen your ass. And, uh, <laughs> that's coach. yeah, that's coach. He's like, yeah, I seen your ass. Then I was like, hey, I was like, hey, coach, you know, I never played ball or whatever. And I really want to do this. And uh, he was like, all right, go downstairs and, um, you know, uh, you know, see the coaches, JV coaches and, uh, talk to them, or whatever. So I got my gear, showed up JV and I, you know, so I pretty much got my, my tryout there. And mm. again, man, it, one of those things was, um, and I, and I being a man now and looking back at what I, the actions I was doing and things like that, um, I felt that I had the physical capabilities and everything. But the thing about it, man, again, as soon as I got like you say, you I didn't know at that time because I didn't play ball, so I didn't know like, hey, man, if you can't get running back, get wherever you can get. So I, I figured, yeah. I figured, man, you know, I, w- I want to play running back or whatever. So when I didn't, I asked the coach. He was like, man, get get your ass over there, man. You didn't even make summer practice. You can't ask for. No fucking position, <laughs> and uh, and so you know I go over there, Coach Boulay, and I forgot the other guy. I can't believe my Coach Boulay, uh, uh, Joe, uh, Joe, Joe, Joe Page, yeah, yeah, Joe, Joe Page, yeah, yeah, Page. Yeah, Coach, yeah. So I, so he was like, yeah, get over there, whatever. So you know, I, I started doing this. They put me at uh, D lineman or whatever, and then um, the special teams or whatever. And special teams kind of became like it was like, hey man, look, when if I get like you see, if I touch that field, man, like I wasn't yeah. making, I wasn't making plays, but. When I touched that field, man, I was blocking, or I was, I was, I was, I was, I was turning myself into a missile, and whoever had the ball, so I might go <laughs> that's, that's why it. I made, made my I made my plays on there, man. The special teams, but I'm like most people, are like ah, oh, man, I can't. I'm like, dude, I'm on the field. They line, they put me out there. I'm going go down there. I'm running. I'm like going towards the ball. I'm hitting somebody near the ball or the ball carrier. So that's what I, I, I did, that's man. It. And, um, Make you please. That's yeah, it. man. And they, uh, so like, again, that, that right there, man, you know, one of those things that kind of, I mean, in my career, my football career, as far as high school, look, look like knowing what I know now, man, and thinking about like, dude, I, I screwed myself because, because I didn't get that running back position. I was kind of sour about it. And then also I started mm-hmm. learning about it. Then fucking uh, <laughs> next summer, Mark, like what's up? Mark, not, Mark, Mark came to the office too. So I see him like, man, ain't no way in the world, man. I'm gonna get this now. I mean, this is crazy, <laughs> dynamite kid, man. So I and I knew it was like, man, Mark been scouted since since Pee Wee, man. And 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 the Mark Mark been they knew about Mark since Mark put on those pads the first time. So like then I knew it was like it was levels to the game before high school. I didn't know that. So I knew I learned things more. And then again, I got around Coach Sham and and I, w- I want to talk to Coach Sham as well too, man, because. Yeah. At the time, at the time, I felt like Coach Sam was like sliding me or whatever. But what I realized, I guess I had pot- I had potential, but he he seen it, and then I, I didn't mm-hmm. really live up to that full magnitude of what mm-hmm. I could have been because again I was sorry about not being a running back. So I was like, well, whatever, I'll you know, I'll do whatever. And it's like for him, it's like, hey man, he wanted these guys. You got your own kids. You got to coach mm-hmm. all these other guys. So. I mean, outside of like kind of pushing a guy along, if a guy really doesn't want to do it or really ain't showing the interest, you, you're going to move on to those who want to put that, put that, uh, really put it down, mm-hmm. and then kind of not saying like you're leaving them behind, but if a guy's really been that stubborn as a coach, you got to know when to be pulled back or just ignore him. And it, actually, so Coach Sam ignoring me made me actually play yeah, harder. Yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this: as coaches, we play a, a lot of stuff. We play mind tricks, right? You know what I mean? Mind tricks is we got to know, like, like. What makes you tick? Right. Like I have certain players that if I ignore them, they will go. It'll, it'll drive them so crazy they'll go so hard. Right. And, and you gotta know your player. I, I got some player like you. You can't curse at every player. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> one play. I had one player like I remember Sterling and Mark. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give these prime examples of the two. They they were so similar where they would go crush somebody and they would come on the field so hype. And I would look at them like I ain't impressed. I mean. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> And that would drive them crazy. They would go out there and try to hit somebody even harder. Yeah. Quarterback, quarterback, my with curl. I never, I never hollered at curl day in my life because that he wasn't that wasn't him. I would tell curl, I was like, "Come here, curl. I love you. I need this." Curl would go out there and do whatever it is right. because I to motivate him. So, like the the the, the better co- the great coaches are the ones who have diversity in their coaching ability. Mm-hmm. You. You can't blanket everybody. You, you know, you see some coaches, all they do is holler, fuss, and cuss. Right. You're going to miss a lot of kids. You see some coaches who just the mild coaches, you're going to miss some kids. Some kids, it, it takes that. Right. And, and you got to understand what makes kids tick. You know, sometimes I had one kid, Terrence Wilson, Lord have mercy. 
Terrence Kane of Edmondson, a grown man. I mean, this uh, uh, big Sy- Sykes little brother. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So ter- 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 I mean, he come in 6'2", 185, <laughs> grown. So, but his, I mean, he was allowed, he was out of control. Mm-hmm. So he did what he want pretty much through pop, all, because he was just, he was a better athlete than most kids he right. was playing against. So when he get there, I mean, you know, in trouble, I had to go to, I had to sit in his classroom with him. You know, I remember one time, it was so bad, the teacher called me. I said, man, look, I done ran him all through practice. I took him out of class, took the locker room, put his cleats on. We weren't running hill doing class. I was like, if you ain't going, if you ain't going to do sport doing class, go get something out of it. And it so happened that his classroom was right there by the hill. So his whole class in a window, the teacher let them watch him run hills. And it was hot. <laughs> So it was blazing hot. He yeah. was sweating. He was yeah. like, you serious, coach? And well, we ran him. Yeah. So this, it, he still ain't getting it yet. Because one thing I learned, he was such a freakish athlete that running didn't really phase him. Right. It, it got the minimum out of him. So we, uh, I think it might have been a sophomore year, freshman sophomore year, we going to Mervo. You know, on the bus, we don't talk. So we, were, we drive, we drive, we're driving. I, he back there, he just talking. So I turn around, make eye contact. All right, cool. You see how... All right, I turned back around. He started talking some more. And it so happened that that year, he took uh, Marquita with Lil Speedy. He took Speedy's spot. Mm. Speedy was a senior, but Speedy came back, came back and camp fat and out of shape. You, you know what I mean? So I remember, and this is why I respect my parents at Emerson. So his father came out, came out and said, Coach, got to talk to you for a minute. I was like, what's up? He said, um, so what's going on with Speedy? I said, he's fat and out of shape. He followed up and said, I told you to work out this summer. That's on you. And that was it. Right. So we were on the bus going to Mervo. I looked at Speedy and said, Speedy, you up. And all the head turns back there. What'd he say? What'd he say? We get over to Mervo. Speedy's, you know, Speedy pump now. Like, you know, because he, he could have, he coming to a senior, Speedy could have quit. I ain't starting. I don't care. Said a word. Played the special team, played his backup role. And once he got his shot back, he just balled. But see, with Terrence, I said Terrence from that game until like the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So it might have been this game because I had to physically and mentally break him. Right. You know what I mean? Because if if that didn't happen, Terrence was going to be dead in jail because he was he was grown. You know what I mean? And when you that grown and you that tough, streets love people like that. Right. And so when, when I like I literally uh, I literally had to break, and from once I once I set up all them games, I never had an issue out of Terrence the next the rest of his time at, at Emerson. Right. You know. What I mean? But it took you got to understand the niche. Like running him didn't hurt. Me. You know what I mean? And Burris doing other things we did to them didn't, didn't, didn't hurt. But him sitting and watching it, it game after game, that humbled him so much that that was it. Right. You know what I mean? From that point on, he balled the rest of his his, his time there with no issues. Yeah. So but see, a lot of times coaches don't realize it, it's the bigger picture. The, the deterrence on the field give us a better chance to win? Yeah. But I had other kids that could do the same thing. But it's, it, it's the bigger picture. I gotta break him for life. You right. know what I mean? If you don't break him right now, turns turns not with us. He would no longer, I know he wouldn't meet it. Right, 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 right. He married, got his own business, doing all these great things because we poured into him and we understood that winning is, is always bigger than winning games. Roger that, man. And that's for the guys that are we're watching this, man. That's another thing, right? Again, that sets it, it's it's easy to coach when again you're in a rural place. Everything good, good community, good clean, no violence, no drugs. Like you, ain't, you're not, you just worrying about coaching. And maybe, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe a dude got his heart broke with his first girlfriend, or maybe some some domestic stuff or stuff like that. Right. And when you My got bread, right. when you got all that that I just said, plus the cops, plus the drugs, plus you know going to the store to get milk and you get caught in a crossfire, man. Like you got to deal with a lot of different things. And then like you know guys yeah. out there again. Unfortunately for me. Uh, my mama, I was, I came from a pretty good background, so I didn't have, like, I, I just, I was trying to learn the game because I didn't, well, I, well, I was, I was trying to, I guess I, I should have been trying to learn the game, but I was like lifting weights and just getting stronger and playing lacrosse and everything else. But like, mm. I didn't have like the, the, I mean, there was some domestic stuff there, but it really didn't affect me. But again, you got kids that are dealing with, like you say, if a guy's coming from like a house, pl- a place where his dad is yelling at him and the mom and beating the mom up. And then like the coach is like doing the same thing he's like dude i get that at home or vice versa man so that's where i mean again at that point i wasn't even thinking about what you i just like coaches man kind of just seem like teachers because you know you see a teacher at the mall like, hey man they go to the mall too and you just see coach, coaches just kind of be like 
they they kind of like they come across as teachers like they don't see you guys don't see human because it's like to us man you got that clipboard you got all these plays in your head and we ain't know you know i mean hey man you got bills you got kids now that i know it's a man you guys are doing all that stuff all the practices dealing with all these personalities plus your own life and, and every day you come there every day we there through a three whatever at the locker room man like it's just like we felt like i felt like as a player like you guys did, i'm like you know, in the daytime, you guys are sitting around going like this, tooling your thumbs. Like, nah, man, you out there working. <laughs> and then, like, nah, man, you, you don't know. Coach, man, got a lot lot to deal with, man, before you get to working with all these personalities, the prima donnas, the, the, the guys who want to be rough, the guys who don't want to pay attention. So you got 50-something mm-hmm. players with different personalities, maybe some of them similar. So, man, again, man, it's, you know, it's, uh, I mean, uh, mad, pre- mad appreciation to what you've done over the years. And uh, the things, that. the things you deal with, and everything, man. So, kind of moving from that a little bit, man. It's like because I hear him in the background, man. You got the kids or something in there running around and yeah. everything. So, yeah. like, like, like your own kid. How, how many, how many kids you have, and how many, how are they involved in uh, different sports and everything? Oh, seven, seven kids. Oh man, My oldest, oldest is uh, twenty-two. He lives in Atlanta right now. Got right. Uh, cut in half. Okay. So, you know, he played lacrosse. He played uh, football. Uh, he wrestled. Okay. Uh, he went to college with wrestling. Then you know he came back and he decided that he wanted to do barber school. So bam, he rolling like so. He he doing well. Right. And, and proud, very proud of. Him. And uh, under him is Lil Dante. Lil Dante he runs track at Dell State. He'll be a, a sophomore. So you know, he he doing well. Good GPA. Like I say, he, he came through the process of he was in Baltimore running. You know, wasn't getting what he needed. Then he finally came up here with us and he and just blossomed to a right. state champion. Um, all state, you know, so he's doing real well. Under him, then you have Chloe. That's my uh, my lacrosse baby. Yeah, yeah, I see her. <laughs> yeah, she's like, so she she's doing great thing. Like she's a softball. Tell her, boy. tell her, I keep you, I keep it on deck, man. I keep it on deck, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so like, she played lacrosse. Um, she's a sophomore, ranked twenty third in the state. Um, like I say, just in, in right now. One good thing, like I said, with all this craziness going on with quarantine and this stuff, yeah, like them two, they still working. Yeah, I see them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, four to five days a week, we, we getting it because you know, like I say, when the world went back up, we got to be ready. Right, right. So, and that's the whole point, you know. So like I say, and all my girls. So the oldest two are boys, and the rest five girls. Yeah. And they all, all of them play lacrosse and volleyball. Yeah, so, like man. Say, it's, it's, it's always live in the house, you know. But you know, it, it, it's a good thing because, like I said, I, I kind of. I split them up. Right. You know, so when I train, I train. I guess if we do something with Chloe and Dante, then Corey and Clark will do something that I get the Lord to. The Lord to got all the energy. They, yeah. they, they have a ball of energy all the time, you know. But it's good because they get to see their sister go through this process, you know. And sometimes is seeing somebody go through something, it makes it easier for you. Right. Yeah. So it makes you hungry. Right. So when the older kids go run the hill, the little kids like, Dad, why you didn't take us to the hill? So then I had to take them out there in front of him. <laughs> so I, started off, I would just let them go like like a little ways up, you know, because I was because the hill's steep. Right. I was like that. Why do I gotta go the little way? Why can't I go all? So now when they go out there, they go all the way up the hill. You yeah. Know? And, and they ain't pushing. You know. That, that, like I say, that's like I can say having a good foundation. You know, man. I got a, a strong wife who is very supportive. You know, like I say, she's the academiac when it comes to the kids. So, you know, all of them. Like I say. uh, Dante is dean list. Chloe is a uh, uh, president on the road. You know, all the kids get straight A's or A's or B's. You know, because of her part. You know, when it comes to the athletic side and the mold and the mentoring, that's my part. Right. You know what I mean? So they, you gotta have a team. You know what I mean? Like I say, and that's just like even uh, you know, your marriage and your parenthood gotta be like your coaching staff. You just can't have a whole staff full of offensive minded people right. and try people because that's not gonna work together. You know what I mean? You can't have a whole staff of just mild mannered. And defensive guys. Right. So you got to have the coach Sam. You got to have the coach Belay, the coach Pete, the coach White. You got to have different – and the emerge, same thing. Right, right, right. And you got to have that balance, you know, because the things I'm passionate, I go hard about, she might be like, hey, you might want to eh, calm down. That's a little <laughs> bit much. You know what I mean? The things, some things she <laughs> – oh, hey, look, you're doing great. But so it's a good it's a good mixture and balance, you know, that, that's important, you know, because the kids got to have it all. Right. You know, so that, that, that that's that's my take on, like I say, marriage is partnership. Oh, yeah. And, no, and no. parenting is partnership. You know, yeah. you got to, it's a team. 
you know, and you got to know your limits, you know. Sports is me, so I'm running around here, there, 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 you know. Like, she comes to the game, she don't say a whole bunch, you know, until she might see something that she sees something. <laughs> get excited that you hear this this screech that comes out of nowhere because mm-hmm. I remember that one tournament uh, that Chloe had and uh, you know she she first she was saying a whole bunch and something happened and I was at the other end and all I hear you battle and then it was this screech so bad that my parents like it's about time ma you know because they were just so excited to hear her yeah and then she's like say yeah, my son he was running I think we, he was running the meet of champions. It was after they won state championship of Delaware, they got another meet. Mm. They was actually, we were down, you know, and she just let this scream out, let's go. And you could just see how it just boosted him. You know yeah, what I mean? He right, heard right. it and because and he, he always hit my mouth. And like sometimes you gotta, you gotta have that mix up. You know what I mean? He always hear me go oh, in him, in him. So when he heard mine, that's man, look, he turned that thing on, you know, and Finished off the strong, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's 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 what like damn, seven. I didn't know you had seven, man. Like you, I got seven. I got three, and I, I felt like I'm I'm doing something, man. So I got I got two <laughs> I got two boys and a uh, and a girl what the what, four two when uh, she's about ten months. And, okay. Um, yeah, man. And the boys, man. It's like the, another thing when the kids not now having my own. It's like man, it's man. I guys out there who who don't, who haven't had kids, man. When that you know when that, my uh, my first kid came out. It's like everything, all the all the, the the little petty dumb worries you have and everything, man. All that stuff seems meaningless. And then, like, I mean, I, I'll tell you the truth, man. For about for about three months, and then after that, you know, the world comes back and you got bills and it kind of. But like, man, for me, uh, every time I see my kids' face at the end of the day, man, it's like a reset because you deal with the world and all the stuff yeah. out there, and you know, as 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 a most men, how we were brought up, man, you don't you don't come home and complain to the wife. You know, you talk yeah, to her sometimes. You do. But you, you can't be because yeah. your wife ain't marry a dude. She ain't looking for a dude that's a crybaby. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. my, I don't. My wife don't know much about what happened. Now she's working at the shop, so she see it now. And I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm teaching her the ropes and everything, the business, because I'm like Japanese. My wife's Japanese. Okay. Japanese are kind of they want to they, they're non confrontational. So okay. And that ain't you know what I mean I'm like nah I need you to say it just like I'm saying it don't. Don't yeah. don't 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 jazz it up. Don't make it rosy because this is business. So when I talk to these Japanese guys, I lose credibility a little bit because I got a woman speaking for me. That's big here. Like they don't they they respect women, but they got their thing. You know how yeah, 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 how, yeah. how women should be or whatever. But the women in Japan, Japanese women are not weak. They're just they play that role. Then behind the okay. scenes, they talk their stuff and everything. But my wife actually is um. Yeah, I would say she got well before I got my before I got to my wife. You know, it's around the military base, man. So like everybody else, okay. they, they they meet Americans or whatever. So I wasn't the first American she was with. So I had okay. to kind of break down. You know, what I mean, when she met me, I'm a black guy or whatever. So like, why you ain't why you ain't got on the uh, you know the, the Kobe jersey and the Tims? I'm like, I, I don't do that. You know, what I'm saying nothing against yeah, it, but I, mean, I had my own right. style, which was you know keeping it minimalist, keeping it clean. I was racing cars, so she 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 just assumed that all black guys that she met before. We're like you know hip hop, so, like, so where's your mixtape mm-hmm. at? I'm like, nah, I ain't got a mixtape, but I, I make music. So you right. know what I mean, so like, she, I, I kind of shocked her culture a little bit of what she learned and everything. But my wife actually, I locked up, man. She's not, she's very, um, she's Japanese, but she's very open minded. So she's okay. she's open to take like the things that you know. She's flipping out about something that's small, and again, I'm like, yeah, I'm from Baltimore. I've been to Iraq. I've been to Emerson. I've been through all this stuff, man. It's not that big of a deal. Clean up the milk and move right. on. <laughs> so she's good to go, but that uh, you know the the kid thing, man. It's um, it's just again, man. It, it just for me, man. Guys are there who are afraid to have kids, man. It, it, it refocuses you. It gives you even more mm. drive because I didn't. I I had drive before, and then after having my kids and then and seeing their faces, like, hey, man, I can't, I can't let these kids down. It's like That's I mean, true. I got, I got to be literally dead, man. And I I've, I've been here working with a fever. It ain't the smartest thing to do, but it's like. It's like that. It's something. It's something that uh, inside of you, man, to provide. And it's like I'm out there. It maybe take an hour more to do a task, but I got it done. We got paid. We paid rent, and I, I go mm-hmm. home and go to sleep or whatever. But you know, and and, and kind of like getting on that, man, because I got my my kids and everything. I want to talk about with them. But as far as being a coach of kids that being coach, man, what's your what's your ideology on that, man? And like when like as a coach that's had all these kids, man, when do you kind of get in there or kind of back off or whatever. What's your relationship with your kids, coaching things like that? Or has it been? Oh, see, it was, for me, it's, it's fun. To, I understand the game. Right. And I understand the coach. One thing about, I don't coach my, I don't coach against a coach. Right. 
my thing is, like I say, with uh, uh with, with track, like I say, most of my kids are, are besides Shay, Shay play football, but like I say, I'm gonna push you to be to go hard, uh, uh, to listen, and to just play your best. You know, I don't coach X's and O's and don't do this and don't do that. No, I coach effort. Right. You know, and one thing, like I say, if you're going hard, I'm never going to, I'm never going to be that, 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 that parent that say, don't listen, your coach wrong, right, right, do it my right, way, right. hollering different. I remember we was at one tournament Chloe had and I know her speed. So when you're not running to what I know, right. I can with that. <laughs> You know, and, and, and I walked over at like at halftime and I went over because the field was like, I had to go around. I went up on a little hill behind a tree. I just want to make eye contact with her. And I looked at her and I said, you know better. <laughs> and I guess this was, she was just started playing for a, a, this this new club team. She was like 11 playing uh, 15 under. Right. So the coach, I think the coach thought I was trying to coach her. After the game, I said, coach, I know her ability. I said, I'm never going to say shoot or don't do or don't do that. But when she ain't running to the way I know she can run, oh, we got a problem. Right, right, right. You know? And that's one thing I all that's why all I've had no issues with any of my kids' coaches. Mm -hmm. Because the one thing is I'm pushing I remember um Dante in, in the States in I, my game, because I'm a coach, I understand my game. Right. So his coach told right. him in over four hundred, if you don't run a below a fifty, you're not running in a four by four. It was a state championship. So he called me and he was so he was so hysterical. Dad, he said, if I don't run this, and I know what I said? Well, I guess you better run. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not gonna call yeah. coach. Why would you do that? Yeah. You here? Nah. He went out there and did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, as a coach, I kind of I under I knew what he was doing. You know, it's just challenging your kids to be great. You know what I mean? Sometimes, like I say, kids get to that point where they 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 take their foot off the pedal. Right. You gotta motivate them different ways, you know. Like I say, and, and that's I understand that part. So I've never been that guy, you know. I, I listen to what she, the, the coach said, this, this, and this, and I understand. I can decipher between what the coach mean. Yeah, the coach said this, but I know what they're trying to do. Right. Or that I, I need to have you meet. I understand why are you doing it. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now I can't say she's like that. Yeah. <laughs> we understand that role though. Right. You know, she, I don't understand. I said, baby, let's sit back and see how this go. You know what I mean? Sometimes you gotta sit back and let people work because it's 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 methods to this. Yeah. I'm, you know what I mean? I got a kid right now coaching all star team. <laughs> My child, Chris, went to Falls Park. Um, we was in a uh, Baltimore City, Baltimore County All Star game, and we out there, and it's cold, and it's raining, and, and he was like playing like he he want to fall. I said, oh, no. I said, come here for a minute. See that mud right there? Lay right there in that mud for a second. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm looking at him like, I'm dead, sir. Yeah. So he got it, but he was trying to hold himself up. Yeah. So I sat back in the mud, you know, and his mindset, I know he was thinking like, what is this dude? He crazy. What is he doing? Yeah. I, I had to show him that no matter, whenever you on this field, it's about being, to the, you, you can't play timid in any kind of way. That's how you get hurt. Right. You know? You can't worry about being wet. You can't worry about being cold. You can't worry about things being hurt. You just gotta go. And like I say, them life lessons. Right now, I talk to him probably a couple, at least a couple times a month. We just talk. He was like, "Coach, you really make me lay in that mud." I was like, <laughs> "Did it work?" <laughs> you know. Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, you you right." You know, and that's what like these life lessons. You know, but like I say, back to like the coaching part. You gotta let put your kids in position. When you put your kid with a coach in a program like what we did with Chloe, when it was time to go to high school. We, it was between two high schools mm -hmm. that Delta was going to. They were both the top two lacrosse programs. Like, she just wasn't going to any school. You know what I mean? I'm not going through sending her to a school where I know they don't have great coaching. Right, right, they, right, right, right. Uh, so it was between the, the private school, Ursuline, up in Wilmington, and Cape, which is a top lacrosse school in the state. They won the state championship every year, you know. And the choice came was because I would have to take her to Cape. Cape, like, 45, both of them 45 minutes away from where we live. Right. So Ursuline private school, they had a bus that comes to Dover. Cape, I would have to take her. You know what I mean? So, I mean, so, you know, and, and their coach at Ursa, one of the top coaches in the country, like, Fefi, like, she's the truth. Like, she, I, 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 I got a situation where I know that she getting well coached. Roger, you know? yeah. All we got to do is keep grinding and making her stronger, faster, you know what I mean? Moking on that mental, you know, but as far as, like I say, when you put your kid, when you give your kid to a child, to a coach, you gotta let them. You gotta let them coach. Right. I've I know a parent ain't gonna dictate nothing I'm doing as a coach. 
So I'm not going to be that parent. Right. I, I've dealt with me on a small scale because, like I said, Evans, I dealt with that quick. You know what I mean? Like, look, you got a problem with what we're doing with your child, you can take him. Right. Hands, hands down, we ain't going through all this. Ain't, ain't no back and forth. You just and I, I've dealt. And one thing I was always good at is when parents had a problem. Well, why my son ain't playing? Come to practice. Yeah. I'm sure you, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And, and, and it's a sad time. The sad part is these parents don't have real discussion with their kids. Like I remember at Dover, and some kid transferred from Jersey, and his father and he his father wanted more than he wanted. Oh. My son was all this in Jersey, but he quit because the team was sorry. I said, nah, no, 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 no. I'm nah. like, yo, you talking to somebody who do, who do this. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm the flag yeah. right there. So we get to practice. And every time we get to banging, his, his no one, no phone. Yeah. Goes to the athletic director. I don't understand why my son ain't playing. After that, come to me and was like, do I need to set up me? I said, no, I don't know me. Tell his father to come to practice. So we came to practice. I, I waited. To, I see his father in the stands. Good. I got, got in the line because he was a lineman. I put him in the drill with, with a dog. <laughs> the dog put him on a trap. Let him out again. He did it again. Looked up at his father. His father put his head down. Let's go back to practice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to show you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like it's a re- one thing as a coach, I'm never not going to play a kid because I don't like him. Mm-hmm. Any kid that's not playing, one thing you, you know, like, I'm going to sit there and let you know. This is what you're not doing. You know what I mean? If you do this, 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 and this, this is how you get on the field. I don't ever want it to be a guessing game. You know what I mean? I don't want you out there. You you go, you working hard. You doing everything. You know what I mean? That, I went through that. You know what I mean? My, my, my freshman year on the field, I went through that. I'm doing everything right. I know my, I know the defense. I'm going hard, but they will not play me. Right. But I understand. I didn't know the other side of it, what was going on. So, like I say, as, as, as any kid I coach, you're gonna know exactly why. So, like I say. It's never that, that 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 problem. So as a person, I'm never ever 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 going to be that guy. Right. Yeah, that, that's another thing too. Like when you go out there in, in in the games, man, you're like you gotta you gotta. It's like it's hard, man, to step outside of yourself and see, man. Like I'm probably the only guy in this stand right now that's that that's a coach of of guys that went to the pros, D1 ball, and all that stuff right there. So mm-hmm. that right there is like you set yourself, you take yourself out of the mix of the of the normal parents and everything. And I mean, right. for all parents that's there, man. You know that you know hats off to them because it, it, to to be a parent that's working and make time to get to the game because again one thing nothing against my mom my mom just and I knew it she had a schedule she my mom never went to a single one of my games uh, lacrosse mm-hmm. football wrestling anything because I mean it, you know she was she was working man she's making it happen and it, it wasn't nothing there my dad again he was on the other side of ba- uh, other side of Baltimore so I never had at any of my games a single game my parent there but I I knew the reasons why and I as a as a right, right. as a uh, I was a little bit older in high school actually because I failed. Um, I failed uh, sixth grade on my own, and uh, first grade I got held back because I, I, I guess I, I got chicken pox or whatever, and I barely. Okay. And I, when I came back, my mom, you know, that's a testament. She, my mom's a teacher. She, she teaches in Baltimore City now. Okay. And she was like, "Nah, you ain't, you ain't just skating by." So she helped me back, and that. Okay. You know, what I mean, I, I didn't know that was a thing. So she helped me back, had me repeat, and then. Um, you know that from there, sixth grade, sixth grade, I failed, and from that, that was my own because you know middle school, you're getting around little kids, you're doing, you know, girls, you know, you know, middle school stuff, uh, you're starting to get aware uh, of girls, man, and and um, I started hooking school and stuff, man, and I, I was playing, I was playing in a, I was playing in a concert band. So anyway, man, I, I screwed off, failed sixth grade, and then that that hurt of that next year coming back and being in that same sixth grade homeroom, and all my guys being in seventh grade, that was the most embarrassing thing ever, man. So from that point forward, uh, with scholar for not scholarship but uh, honor roll, I made honor roll. I think I missed honor roll maybe once or twice between seventh grade or oh, sixth grade second time, and uh, mm-hmm. and twelfth uh, grade. And I mean, I was honor roll society, all that stuff. Got the scholarship to Maryland for academics and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. And that's one of the things too. I, again, being older in high school, and uh, again for whatever reason, man. Again, lacrosse I excelled and I, I captain that. You know, I did all the stuff for football. Again, kind of going back to want to be a running back. I wanted to be like you say. I wanted to. I I knew inside I could be that guy, but I didn't apply it the right way. Instead of like not getting my right. shot, I just I decided to kind of shut down and like kind of lackadaisical go through things. Sometimes I would play, and then sometimes sometimes I would go off. So when like Big Lonnie came, I'm like that's enough, okay. that's a target right there. So. I baptized Lonnie on that first day of crack back because he didn't know how he didn't keep his head on the swivel. So he went <laughs> running around it. And then like to see to see Lonnie, 
the coaching of you guys, man, to see Lonnie go from that first day of practice to to making the pros, man, like that that right oh, yeah. there, man, that right there is a if you need an example out there to legitimize yourself and everybody else, man, like dude, you took a guy that I mean, honestly, that first day of practice, man, he was he was just soft. He didn't he was big, but he didn't have that he didn't have that internal what you call him. So I I mean, yeah. when I hit him, you know, I'm like this dude's about. 270, 280, whatever. Probably <laughs> and I and I laid him down, man. So I'm like, man, if I hit this guy, I can hit anybody. So that and that, that kind of became my thing, man. The crackbacks and the blocking for Wolf and blocking for Mark and all these guys. And yeah. and and, and kind of towards my 11th or 12th grade year, I knew it was kind of too late. I just start role playing. And then anytime I touched that field, man, I was just trying to get into that position. Because one thing I didn't do as a player, man, again, looking back, is – um. You know, you had, you know, rest in peace, man. You know, you had guys like Daryl, man, who, you know, Daryl had his things outside of the field, man. But one thing I knew, I, I seen Daryl doing a lot, man. And I thought it was like maybe favoritism. But I remember Daryl standing up to practice, going over plays and everything. And, and that was like stuff at high school. You don't really ask too much. It's like if they want to do it, you do it. And like Daryl knew right. that playbook inside out, man. Inside, In, inside <laughs> out. And, he was the only person I ever seen. Question Coach Pete on a on how a play was, it was 100 percent right. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I played for Coach Peter High School. So when, when Daryl did that, I was like, Yeah. Oh. Like, God damn it, son. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 Daryl Daryl was smart. Right. Like, he he was so smart. Yeah, I remember and just thinking about I'm gonna touch on two things with Daryl. Let me go back with what you yeah, said yeah, too. Yeah. I understand that because I, I did the same thing. You know, people don't realize. I had setbacks in life, you know what right. I mean? So coming out of, uh, I went to um, uh, St. Mary, which is a Catholic middle school, you know? So coming out of there, my father said, you know, I had choices to go to, you know, I go to a city, I go to Poly, I go to St. Francis. He, he said Dunbar, I couldn't go to Dunbar. Right. Now, but why I come out of middle school? But I'm like, okay, because my, oh, my mother and my father both graduated from Dunbar. But okay. he said, no. So at first I didn't get, I didn't get accepted into Poly. So I'm like, all right, bet what I'm gonna do. Did I have another letter saying, oh, we opened up another blah blah blah. You know, you accepted the poly. My father, like, what you gonna do? I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going. So I go to poly. You know, I passed first quarter because I wanted to play basketball. You know, what I mean, I was still playing. I was playing. I was still playing up Northwood. So I didn't even play football. I still played Pop Warner. So I passed it. You know, I made the basketball team. So this is when we. We wanted we, we were going to the first pop one national championship team in California. We were the first team to go. So I would go to basketball practice. I would leave a little bit early. They, they get on the bus to get a football practice. So I did that for like a week. And then the coach was like, you know, you gotta make a choice. Either you go play that low league stuff or you go play basketball. I'm like, JV basketball, <laughs> California. Right. She was hey, all right, coach, see you next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but, but see, my problem with what Polly was. Ali was built for kids who just already knew. Right. I had questions, you know what I mean? And the teachers would not answer my, I, mean, I was in math class, you know, and it was something that she did. I was like, I didn't get it. So I raised my hand. I said, can you explain it again? And she was like, no, you'll get it. Yeah. I looked around like, all right, well, yeah. all right. <laughs> I'm still working, you know, working. Cause I, I, at that point in time, I struggled with math. Math was, my, oh, was not my strength. Me too, man. You know what I mean? So did it again. They don't, you know, ask the teacher another question again. She said the same thing. Oh, you would get it. So what I stopped doing, I stopped getting on that bus and coming to school. You know what I mean? So like I said, I failed ninth grade with flying. So I passed, I passed the first quarter. That was probably about it. Like I passed a couple of classes here and there. You know, I had my report card from my mother. My mother asked, where your report card? Oh, my, I gave it to you. I'm telling you, I gave it to you. Play that game. So end up failing. They told me, um, uh, if you want to pass, you got to come to school on this certain day to go to summer school. And, you know, summer in school just didn't yeah, go to yeah, yeah. So, you know, so bam. So I went from, so I failed ninth grade at Poly. I went to St. Francis. St. Francis, you know, St. Francis back then only had basketball. Mm. You know what I mean? But I'm a baseball, I'm a baseball kid. I played football as well. So I went to St. Francis back to, it was a, a, a teacher there, a sister Helen Torres, who broke down math to me in a way that helped me understand it. And math became my favorite subject from that point on. Because mm. somebody who just took time, you know what I mean? Why, I don't know why she decided me, but she, I mean, she broke it down. I'm like, that's it? She was like, that's it. And she gave me the foundation. Like, we, what it was is Polly, I'm trying to get a foundation, but y'all trying to build a skyscraper right. and we don't have no foundation. Right. You know what I mean? Because I, I, my, uh, 
my private school, middle school, we didn't have algebra. We took math. You know, a lot of these kids who come to Poly come from the public school, Roller Park and different places. They had algebra already in middle school. Mm-hmm. I didn't have that foundation. So instead of her just, you know, come after class or I'll explain it, she just kept, no, you'll get it, you'll get it, you'll get it. And I never got it. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right, so right. I went to St. Francis. Um, still played in North for another year because, like I say, St. Francis ain't football. So we, I played, that's what I played for her. Played basketball, you know. Had a good basketball career, going well, you know, looking at it. The next year, that summer, I'm in the basketball league, and an old guy came up to me and said, you transferring to Dunbar. I said, man, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, and let alone that next week, I transferred to Dunbar, you know, <laughs> and everything, I mean, history from that point on, you know, with the baseball, the basketball, the football, you know, I came into a – and then coming into Dunbar was different because being a transfer, a three-sport athlete transfer, and you come into – a place where something like basketball or dumbbell set back then. Right. It was set. Right. Like you knew who was coming in eighth, coming from eighth grade, and ninth grade. You knew who was making varsity. Yeah, it, it was set. So I came in and kind of, you know, put a movement to some things, you know, because I know mean, some cats like, oh, you know, you ain't gonna make the basketball team out here. It's okay. We'll see. You know, went out there, did what I did, made JV my sophomore year, coming in a trial for Boston, made Boston as a junior, you know, and my junior, we were so stacked. I mean, we were, we were stacked. You know, Tommy, Bootsy, Billy, Noodles, you know, Norman Nolan, all these Division of Basketball players. Well, I didn't get a whole bunch of time, but I got a lot of free sneakers and sweatshirts. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I, I, and one thing I tell people, the reason why I can deal with the, the asshole kids so much, because I don't think I've coached a kid that was worse than me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I promise you. But, my, hey, when I say I was bad, Man, like I had, I had, you know, I was a, uh, uh, and he, and our basketball coach passed away, you know, rest in peace, you know, Paul Smith. But if Coach Pete was still at Dunbar my junior year, we had, na- we had national champion. Hmm. Hands down, his coaching, his, it, what he got out of us, we, we was national champion, hands down. You know, Paul Smith was trying to figure things out. You know, you still had people, you had Coach Pete boys, you know, so a lot of, a lot of, you know, internal issues, right, you know, right, right, right. so. We still won states. We, I think we, we still ended up in the top 10, but his mindset was he wanted to win a state championship. Our mindset was we don't care about that. You know what I mean? We're we about trying to put these national bands up on the ball. And I, I don't think he really got that. Mm. You know, so we'd be in games. There'd be some games where um, he called me like about three minutes left. He'd go over to the scores table. So I go there to check in. Then he go back and forth and get down like like under two minutes. I go sit back down. You know, he'd be like, hey, what you doing? I said, Coach, ain't no point in me going there right now. I ain't breaking no sweat. We're going to a party after this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be, every time he asked me to go in a game, I look at the clock. Now I'm good, Coach. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm good, you know. So it, 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 that, just, that was me. So, I mean, it would be, I'd be in a game. I remember we were in a state championship game. I remember like that. We in a state championship game. We down three. My senior year, and I got more time. My senior year with three of us, that was, we was a six, six, seven, eighth man. So it depends mm-hmm. on who, who had to come out. Right. So I got time I seen years. So we're in the game and Tommy swung me the ball and we was by outside the bench. So when I got the ball, I hit the coach on the top about no. So I shot it all neck. He gonna say, yeah, I turned around and said, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we had Coldfield House. It's packed in there. You know what I mean? But my thing is I can deal with assholes because right. that, that was me. So that's yeah. why the turn any of these kids I ever dealt with and, and the kids that people wanted to give up on I knew, nah, I don't break him because I mean I, I've been there. I know what it's like to just just do stuff. Like I sometimes I used to do stuff. It was no reason, no rhyme or reason why I did it. It just seemed like something nice to do. Oh, I'm gonna go do this today. I, I used to be a basketball practice tackling people. Yeah, no yeah reason. Man. You know, coach, you tackle somebody else, you going home. All right, coach. But that boy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, man. That's crazy, man. <laughs> And they'd be like, um, you know, you run a, if you miss your free throw, you run suicide. So when they call me up, everybody should go to the line. Oh, y'all don't think I'm me? I dribble the ball, <laughs> you know, because I could run for days. Like running couldn't running couldn't affect me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I didn't care. So you know I mean, it, it, so like I can say, my coaching style came from so many different things. You know, the, the coach Pompey and the coach Stan. You know, the coach Eaton. You know, coach Herb. All you mix all that in, you know. I had a coach named Bucky Lee. 
Rocky Lee probably taught me my greatest lesson as a player that I didn't realize until I was in college when he finally explained it. Because we was playing, um, we come back my sophomore year, we're going to play poly. Mm. So you know, by all week, I'm going hard in practice. I'm going to punish them. You know, because I, I got this, I had this hate for poly because I feel like. Right, 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 right. You know, be like, I, I, would, I, mean, I mean, I'm going hard in practice, d and up. I'm doing everything right, but it's just it's about poly, poly. So we get to the poly game. I'm like, yeah, so I, I ain't start that good. All right? I'm ready. First quarter go by. All right, bet. All right, second quarter, you're going to start with second quarter. I'm ready. Second quarter go by. So I'm at halftime like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? Third quarter go by. Fourth quarter go by. I didn't touch the court. So I'm mad. I throw my uniform in the locker room. You know, he like, what you quit, man? I'm mad about it. So I'm, I go off. So I leave the locker room. Go to school. I think that might have been a Friday. So Monday we come to school. This, this is Coach Pete speech to me. So I'm laying on the um, floor. He come in the gym. He say, oh, so you quit, son? And I'm about to explain. <laughs> hey, you had some practice. <laughs> and you ain't going to hear my part. So, you know, go through the season. You know, I, and I always had this, this, this tension with Bucky. Mm. You know, rest Bucky. I always had this little tension with because I was still hurt over that. Mm. So I was like at Craig Cornwell when I was in college. So I came and I was like, Bucky, let me talk, let me talk to you real quick, real quick, Bucky. And I'm like, you say, what's up? I said, Bucky. Why you uh, remember that? Uh, that poly- <laughs> I, I, first of all, I think you will remember the game. Yeah. I was like, "Fuck, you remember the poly game?" He said, "Yeah, man, I remember that, man." Yeah. I said, "Fuck, you what happened?" He said, "Man, look, Jones, man, you made it about you, man. It, it, it wasn't about the team, man. So I had to show you." I'm looking like, "Hey, fuck, you could have told me that." Yeah. <laughs> Lesson that that understand that that that, that you never bigger than the team. Right. You know, I was doing it the right way because I, I was going hard, but it was about me. Right. But I, I was going hard because I, I, I wanted to show them something, but it wasn't about us. Right, right, right. A lot of my coaching philosophy comes back to that right there. Like, people don't realize, like, why would I, I used to buy teams the same size and we all would wear the same size? Because we are us. Only thing that you need to separate you from the next person is your number. Right, right, right. Everything else with uniform. I, like if I could afford, afford gloves back then, Everson, we'd have had all the same gloves. Mm. See, if, like I, we, I got wristband. Like we were just uniform from top to bottom because I always wanted people to understand it, it's us. It's never me. It's never you. It's always us. Roger that. Yeah, that's one thing too, man. Like in the uh, back then, man. Like you know, now again, I, I remember when we got the Nike jersey and everything. When I first got there, we mm. had the. Uh, I guess the Washington Redskins that donated, like, because we had that. Like, people was like, man, how you get the Redskin pants and stuff? It's like, man, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got that. those, man. They, like, went through those and everything, man. And, and uh, that's one thing I was, I was I talked about it on the, um, uh, with Jason. Uh, it's just like the coming from the city, man. We knew, we knew, uh, well, now I know what you guys were against trying to get funding, trying to get this, trying to get mm-hmm. everything in there. We didn't, as a player, that that time, you're, you're, you're oblivious to what it takes to get. You know to, want to 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 keep those uniforms clean, to get those to, to, yeah. keep, to get pads and everything and all that stuff, man. And uh, for Emerson, man, to, to be a city school man, I think you guys really like. You know, you guys. I mean, I'm not even. I don't know where the money even came from, man. But you guys made it happen for us, where we were like in, in the city regards, man. We 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 looked the part. We played the part, man. Mm-hmm. Everything was proper, man. And uniforms like you guys and letters. I mean, you guys gave the DB because you know you had. The Ramon, the, the Ramon, and all those dudes, and they got, they got, they got to be pretty, man. So you gave those guys a little bit, a little bit of leeway to kind of bring their stuff in, yeah. but you never let them go too far to the right. Whereas right. the guys who ain't, who can't get the gloves or get that special stuff, or you know, what I mean, they would have like, you know, back in the day, guy, the biggest thing was like the cage you got. I mean, if you, yeah. if, you're, if you're, I mean, you know, you got the pick of the litter. So I mean, of course, your linebackers, quarterbacks got the good ones, and then you kind of. It filtered down f- f- to what was available, and the guys who were playing defense wanted that that, that you know that that little slit right there with the tent advisor. <laughs> they want to look good. <laughs> they want to be like LT or something out there. I'm like, uh-huh. like man, you are gonna get this cross cage with the D line cage and and go out there and do what you gotta do, man. But you, you guys, man, you guys uh, kept everybody in check, man, and like the grooming standards and uh, just that stuff, which again led into again. I went to the military, so when I got to the military. That part of it, like you know, being being in check, that was easy because I mean, you guys, easy, yeah. you guys enforce that. So again, man, kind of doubling back is um, so how so many how many so many uh lessons learned 
on that field, man, translated into every aspect of my life that I still utilize to like this day to what I'm going to do today. When I, when we get done with here, I got my invoices done. I got a customer coming in to do some stuff, man. And it's just like, everything is planned. Like you should never be out of, um, in life, man. I mean, there things like this COVID stuff and all this stuff. Yeah. Stuff happens, so you gotta be flexible, and that's what you guys taught. But at the same time, man, you guys taught order and everything. And I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm called like I said, man. Like everybody don't pick up on it, unfortunately. No matter how much you scream at him and talk to him, but I, I took the heart, uh, the time you guys gave me and, and and all that stuff and applied all that stuff, man. Which again makes me successful today. Uh, but you know, some people don't do that, and it's like, hey, man, like as a coach, it's like you keep talking and keep talking, like you say, taking the guy to class and doing this stuff. Some people get it, man, but it's like one thing. I know you felt it, man, where some guys you can talk to your your your, your, your face is red. They just not gonna they're not gonna mm. come around, man. So it's like as, as a coach, does that is that something? And important and, and to get into the streaming, a guy that does uh, you know uh, get killed or whatever or whatever. Does that? I mean, I see you post, man. Like I mean, I remember the guy uh, that played for Maryland that passed away like last summer. Mm. And uh, yeah. I didn't know him, and I, I read up on him and everything. And being in Maryland, I played it. I played uh, for guys out there who watch and don't know. I did. I walked on at Maryland. I played one season, and um, it, it didn't work out, man. Grades and all that stuff went whatever. But I got a chance to play half a season in Maryland, and yeah. um, seeing that man like as a coach, man, is that something that uh, I mean, is that something that takes a while to get over, or is it, you know, how do you deal? How do you deal with that, man? When you see the, the see, guys. One thing is- I look at any any kid when these murders happen. I feel it like it's, it's us. It's right. our fault. Right. And people, I remember one time I made a post just probably like two or three years ago. And people was kind of coach was kind of offended. And I was like, yo, every time it's a murder, it's our fault. Right. Because I remember. What I, meant I remember. It, is, I remember it. This this kid who pulled that trigger came through one of our program, even basketball or football, because right. all these kids play something at yeah. some point. So as a coach, what we didn't do our job to try to deter them from this lifestyle. Mm. You know what I mean? So people like, you know, people was offended. But once I started under, I talking, understanding, this is what you got to understand. It's our job. Like, we got to we gotta do more. But obviously, we're not doing enough because it keeps happening. It keeps happening, you know? And like I say, whenever you lose a kid, it, 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 it's, it's hard. Like, and even, even with Dura, like, that was, that, was, that was the hardest one because that was the first one. Mm. You know, and 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 with Daryl, what what made Daryl great is what also caused him to lose his life. Yeah, you know, what I mean, Daryl thing was Daryl couldn't live with fear. Mm. I remember, and I don't know if you remember this, but when we had uh, the uh, six way scrimmage, we'd always go up Walbrook. Yeah, and Mark Walbrook was up there, Merville was up there, so we was walking in the gate at Walbrook. And Merville was over there. Merville back then had a, a kid, I think Chris Kane. I, uh, yeah, I remember Kane because he, he gave me a, he gave he me a, the older version of Mark Hicks. He, he, gave me a, he, he gave me a concussion, man. Yeah, Chris, Chris was a bad boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Daryl had fear of, of, of him. Mm. So we walk in and I, and I see Daryl bear off. So I'm thinking he sees my he knows, so I ain't paying no attention. But we walk over there. I don't know if he swung on, we pushed it. He did see, they got into it. You know, and he came when he, after he broke up. I said, what you doing? He said, all right, I'm good now, coach. But that was his mindset. His mindset is, if I fear something, I got to go face it. You know what I mean? Now you you, you go you go fast forward to when he lost his life. Mm. I talked to him before it happened. Mm. He called me. He was like, you know, coach, I'm about to go out. Uh, I'm about to go out here at West Pole. I'm good. I'll be back. But I'm thinking in his mind that, because he was there with his little girl, but I'm thinking he just wanted to use me to get out of the house. So I'm thinking he just used me. But what? What's up? What are you talking about? All right, boy. He, he, you know, he's done that before. Right. I said, yeah, that, you know, he had originally got shot first out there. Mm-hmm. Went back out there, the same person who shot him before. That's what ended up killing him. But his mindset of he couldn't live in fear. So I, I guess within his body, but this is what I was trying to teach Daryl is God trying to get your attention, you know, because when he got, because Daryl had things in place. You know, school wise, I think he. I mean, if he had got on the field at Morgan, they would have took off. But like I said, he that's he was just he was so talented, but he was so smart. You know, the first time he got shot, he got shot in his right arm, which is in his right leg. Like I say, I said, Daryl, that's 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 telling you, he shot you got shot in your leg so you can sit still. What's your biggest attribute in life? Your arm. Your arm is what's your, your big. You know what I mean? So, so like I say, losing him was tough. Yeah. You know. I say after that, we lost a couple of more, you know. Um, Earn, 
one of my good kids, you know, in the streets, you know, he didn't come back to David. You know, that it, it's never easy. You know what I mean? It's never easy. And in, in the, in the mindset is one thing I, I try to do more of now is when a kid crossed my mind, I reach out. Right. You know what I mean? Because there's, there's different times where, you know, like, you know, because over these 20 years, I got a lot of kids. I one kid on Facebook like, Coach, how everybody your kid? Y'all, all my kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once you pray for me, you, you my child. The same way, you know, like I said, when Coach called me son, as a as a as a tenth grader, that meant something to me. And I, and I, I was Coach P's son, and I'm still Coach P's son. That that's just my mindset. Right. You know what I mean? So I with my players, you know, like never changes. You know, so it, it, we got to stay in contact. I, I, and it's great. I put a post up today. You know what I mean? All coaches, or that 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 kid that crossed your mind, reach out because even as 37, 38, 30, 20, we got kids all ages, and I'm still getting phone calls like coach. With, with big decisions, or what do you think about this? Or because once you become a coach, it, it don't it, like it don't stop at the four years. Yeah. It ain't like okay, you graduate and now you turn off. Good seeing you, you know. It yeah. never stops. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's major, like, and that's what we as coaches, when you decide become to become a coach, it's, it's a major. It's not for fame. You shouldn't be doing it for money. You shouldn't be doing it because you want to deal with the, the mothers. Like when you decide to become a coach in any sport, any level. You gotta understand that it, it, it's, it's it's a lifelong thing. It's a it's like a fraternity, right? You know, into it and you stuck. Like these kids will never like a, a kid called me. I needed you as a reference to get my my uh, my clearance at a high level for whatever he was trying to do. And he was like, Coach, it was Ben. And he was like, Coach, I'm glad to how y'all was just a stickler for the small details. And I back then I just thought y'all was just being just being crazy, but. Through life, now I understand. You know what I mean? Because it, it, the small things make the big things work. Right. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I, I not, besides being a father and, a, a, and my husband and a father, being a coach is my, the greatest feeling. Because like watching a, a kid do something they never thought they could do. Yeah. Is the most uh, edifying feeling in life. Because you got kids and they like, I, just, I can't, I can't, and you just keep pushing them and you keep pushing. That's the same thing I do with my kids. Like it's different things that we do, and I put them in one thing. I call it I call it a, a, a controlled situation because I can still control it. Because when you got in the world, in some situations you get you can't control. Right, right, right. I uh, put them in situations where you know I push them, and you know with Chloe it's the box jump, and Dante was doing this other workout, and they were just like, ah, I can't do it. I'm gonna keep pushing you because you're gonna do it while I can control it. You know what I mean? Because when you get to college, like Dante, you go, I said, you're a Division One track. So it's going to be thing I can't control when you're out there. So you got to dig deep and find it to right. get it done. Right. So when you get to college, you know, you're on this Division One level, It's I can't control that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to dig deep and find it. So like I say, that's the, the part about like as a coach. Because even like I say, when I'm dealing with them, that's my coach side. They ain't dad. You know what I mean? Because dad wanted to sit back and relax and go to the game and enjoy yourself. You know, even with her. A lot of people don't understand, like, I, I'm always, like, I can't enjoy her game because I'm filming. Right. And I'm filming because we come back and we talk about it. You know what I mean? Because it's like, like, it's different things. And, and, and one thing about her that's kind of separates her from all the rest of my kids is she's so hard on herself. You know what I mean? So a different thing, like, may, maybe having the game, I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll tell this game. Or, or, or I'm going to say something about this. And we get there, and she would just run everything down. And it'd be like, Oh, let's go get ice cream. <laughs> like, you, know, because, you know, you're like, like I, I, how can I beat you up when you already know exactly what it was? And you know, like, when you admit and you see something, you can't correct it until you admit to it. Yeah. And she, I did this, this, and this. I'd be like, God damn it. Then you done, you done stole my whole. Yeah, my, man. You know what I mean? So I, I got to stop her from beating up. You know, like Dante, like I said, I can push him. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it, all, all, with him, it's always just pushing him to go harder. You know what I mean? Because like I said, you got to, with, with, with your kids, your athletes, anybody you're dealing with, everybody got a threshold. Mm -hmm. and some some of our thresholds, are, we make them. You know, they ain't our, they ain't our, our, our roof, but we'll put it here and we're like, man, I can't go no further. Yeah. That, which, you got to, you know what I mean? We got to yeah, keep, yeah. <laughs> keep, keep, you know what I mean? Keep, keep, keep pushing it, you know? And and that, that's, that's, that's what, and that happens in life. Like you get in your job, you know, you can't just say, Okay, I'm I'm in this job and say this you got your business and you just working for somebody. 
nah, well, that's not your threshold. Right. We get on your own. Right, you know, right. you come in on, on a base level of a company and you can work your way up to manager, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It, or owner, and you can keep pushing. So that's the thing, the lesson we got to always teach kids how to keep pushing. Just like the football, when you want that position, you keep pushing. Mm-hmm. When you want that, but you, and that, that's just f- football sports is just a, a, a microcosm of life. Right, it is, man. It is, and that's all it. Is. And that's that's why I love sports so much, you yeah. know, because anything you go to, you can relate it back to a practice or a game or something you went through. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's been times where games we we who we play. I remember we was playing um. The playoff game where we were in hooking line with Danny. We was down against it was Northwest. It was Northwest. Your it might have been your freshman or sophomore year with Danny. It was Danny and I'm saying Danny Jason and all I'm saying oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the playoff game, we was down. Danny ran the pump back. We scored, and, and we were still tied. Like I mean, it was just back and forth. And this is when, when I say the street side of, of, of when you get a kid with street and athleticism and smart, it's something special. Mm. So Danny ran a pump back and he fell and he laid in the end zone. And I run out there and I go, no, I run out there. And I'm like, yo, boy, you better get up. He was like, he pulled me, he pulled me close to the coach. We need a break. We tired. I'm just gonna lay here for a while. Because he knew it because we were down. So it was just, oh, yeah. it was just you know, <laughs> you know, you know we don't have we, we and one thing about any school, like public school, you don't have a lot of depth. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah, like that was no Danny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was no Danny. So he lay, Danny lay. I mean, he might lay the end zone for like five or ten minutes. You know what I mean? And did he? Did he? And when he knew it, we had enough. He popped back up. We went. We came, drove. That's when he threw the hook a ladder. He caught. He pitched the bird. Bird scored a touchdown to win the game. Oh yeah, man. That, that's that 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 next level of thinking, and and that's what we always want. Even in your business, there's certain things you gotta do. It's mind games in your business, like all right. I need this. I need this deal. Yep. But straight at him, it ain't gonna work. Yep. So I'm gonna go this way <laughs> and come around. Yeah. It's, it's about getting it done. Yeah. So I, you gotta get it done. Yeah. And every time, every time it worked, man, it's like it's it's not like you because I'm 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 very direct with my customers. Again, I use Coach Pete method where Coach Pete never. I never, I, I personally never seen Coach Pete BS anybody. Like that was, yeah. you asked him something, it was like, "Bad lot, this, this is your answer. This is why I didn't happen to get it done, or it just ain't you ain't got no choice to do what I say, or whatever, man." So when you you do that again, taking the street smarts, taking all that stuff there, man, it's like you you, you um, I, I got man, it's like you you got your your way your way you are, you operate yourself and how you deal with other adults. So you figure other people are like that, but everybody ain't like that. Everybody ain't born that way. So I come at a customer one way. And then I like I'll notice, man. Like, cause I, again, I, I know some guys, man. But they don't, when they don't, when they don't message me back within a day or two, it's because I scared them off. So okay. I'm like, so I'm like, okay. hey, man, I'm just I'm, I'm making contact to make sure this was this. And also, by the by the way, man, if there was any miscommunication, man, I'm not trying to be a dick to you, but I just need you to know these are my terms and my things. And they'll be like, oh man, and what, you know, I thought it was this, and I get them back. Some customers, you let you gotta yeah, let them, okay. you, you gotta let them. You, you got that mind games is let them like that you know them, yeah. and then they'll hit you back up two months later or a month later or a week later they realize so, they need yeah and, or they talk to other people and realize that nah man I got this amount of work done by him it's just the style and everything so it's, it's different man again those things you pick up man but the uh like like one of the things you mentioned too man about the um damn man I lost my train of thought man about um I mean like kind of like kid, the kids coming up in the city the kids like kind of you know, what I mean, not being able to save everybody, man, and also the the kids that say, "I oh, mean, I, this is what this is all I can be at. This is all I can do, man." I've been, I mean, again, man, from getting my scholarship to playing in Maryland to doing, you know, I was the top of the top of my ranks in the military three years, mm-hmm. three years in Iraq and everything. And I always, um, I went to basic uh, military basic training, and I was the dorm chief, which is the leader, of the guys when the when the when the, when the okay. instructor not around. Then I get okay. into the military. I'm doing all this stuff, and it's like. I don't know what it is, man, but the leaders see that uh, that confidence, confidence, yeah, but confidence, cockiness, but not, but not, not at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's yeah. So I've always been yeah. in those positions where, yeah. hey, man, you the guy. And then again, um, I drove for the, the highest ranking guys in the, in the military and ended up getting here. And it's like, man, everything kind of worked out. But one thing is, one thing I learned and I apply now. I, I will not accept. I will not accept. Uh, 
ridicule from somebody based on somebody else, somebody else's responsibility. As far as like, right. I mean, it's not a business that's supposed to do something or whatever, but it was my business and I did something I messed up, which it don't happen to much, but I, we humans do things wrong yeah. and things go wrong. If it's something that I've done, I admit to it right away. Hey, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to square this that's away. It. I'll pay for it. And people see that, but at the same time, I'm like, hey man, look, this is my responsibilities. This is what I told you how it's going to be. I'm not going to, I got all these responsibilities, my family, my my life, my business. I want to take responsibilities mm-hmm. for all of that. But something mm-hmm. else, like a customer again, some of those guys that didn't play sports, like, hey, being accountable, being on time. Like, hey, man, you got to be a good customer as well. So, like, taking, again, taking those things, man, like you said, man, and, and that's one thing. Again, you guys you guys didn't say that to me directly. Uh, but as I got older and looked back, I'm like, man, if I would have did this and did that and blah, blah, blah. And I used that, I used what I didn't do in high school to walk on in Maryland and ended mm-hmm. up, man. I mean, again, I screwed myself with the grades, took took responsibility for that. But also, man, I went from a walk on to I man, Coach Tony, Coach Tony gave me the tapes to the uh, to the, the video <laughs> tapes, man. And all my, I didn't really have much, man. But all my highlights were just like crackbacks and like hits. And I'm like, man, that's all I got. So I took all those things, man. I took all those hits and lacrosse stuff, put it in one little like five minute video, showed it to the coach. Also looked up that the coach was a. Uh, the coach was a uh, prior Marine, so I did my homework. Like, hey, man, he's a Marine. I actually was going to the Marines before I joined the uh, guy that went to uh, um, uh, college. So I talked to him right okay. there, and I like, I kind of like, hey, man, I was going, I was, I was a delayed entry program for the Marines, so I used that to kind of get on his good side. He was, like, he, was like, he was like, hey, man, go pick that up. And it, one thing I did do is I kept lifting weights, so I was, I was okay. pretty strong. I was two, uh, I was two thirty five, five ten, and uh, as a freshman. But then like they gave me start giving me this powder, man. I went up to two fifty five because I, you know, I got around okay. Sean Merriman, Vernon Davis. I'm like these dudes are a different level. And when Vernon Davis yeah. picked Vernon Davis picked me up by my pads one time, I'm like dude, that, this is a different level right here, man. So anyway, man, <laughs> I uh I get there and everything. I do all this stuff, man. And then like I just use that drive again. All the stuff I should have did in high school that I kicked myself in the ass about. I didn't listen mm-hmm. to you guys about. I didn't push myself. I used that to actually walk on and um. I uh, actually went from uh, I, that walk on process was weird too because I didn't know, like you said, you mentioned earlier, I didn't realize I was a lot of practice dummy, so I didn't know when they say, "Hey man, go in this gap." I'm like, dude, I mean, I'm not a student in the game, but I know I don't go in that gap right there. <laughs> like, I, I know I don't. <laughs> Coach Jones would tell me to go right there, man. So I'm reading. Right, yeah. So I'm like, he was, and the guy guy pulled me to the side. He was like, dude, you gotta, you gotta. Uh, it was Dominic Foxworth. I uh, played. Okay. Yeah, he, he was like, hey man, he was yeah. like, hey man, he was a good guy. He was like, hey man, just. I could tell you didn't, you know, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm not all American, all this stuff. He's like, yeah, man, this, this, we need you guys to give us the looks. And he broke it down to me and it made sense. So I'm like, all right. So I do, I gave him the best wrong looks ever, man. I was doing, okay. I was hitting the gaps and everything. And then, um, special teams, uh, Sammy Maldonado, Sammy, the bull running back from Maryland or whatever, man. He was a guy I didn't know at the time. You don't really touch the stars in practice. Uh-huh. And, um, the guys that I walked on with, the groups that I walked on with, they were still all American, but they just didn't get their scholarships or whatever. But right. I was the only all I was the only non all American on that team, man. So that was okay. like, damn, I thought I was kind of good. So anyway, man, they they the guys are giving us crap or whatever, and uh, the guys are picking on my guys that I walked on with. So I, I feel like a camaraderie with those guys because we all that's tried that's we, we all yeah. tried out together, right? So the guy he was a smaller back, a DB. He was he was pretty he was fast as hell, but he was only like five six five five seven maybe five eight small guy. Okay. So they they knocked him around, right? So I'm like, dude, I I looked at him and he kind of was looking at the ground. I'm like, nah, man, I'm from Baltimore, Emerson. We we do this in practice all the time. So I go out there, dude. I look, I I just I kind of I looked around the field. We were on a uh, kickoff, right? So I see Sammy. I'm like, Sammy's gonna get the ball. I just looked at Sammy the whole time. I didn't look at nobody <laughs> else, dude. I went. Dude, I went down there. I went through people, ran through everybody. Everybody was kind of like lackadaisical. They weren't really in it. Uh-huh. Like this Emerson style right here. So I go right to Sammy. Sammy come up the middle. Dude, I hit Sammy. We both fall. We both, because I hit him so hard. I was kind of, I hit him on my, uh, I was on my my left foot. So, of course, that ain't uh-huh. like, so I, I, I fell off balance. I hopped back up. Sammy's on the ground grimacing. So, all the, this is Sammy, this is Sammy the Bull, man. This dude run people over, right? Uh-huh. So, I just laid into him. Bah! And all of the guys looking at me, all the coaches looking at me. I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm, I'm thinking, Emerson, you know, we get off. And they were like, dude, they look at me like, dude, what did you just do? That's all starting running back. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, 
So then one of the coaches kind of was like, he was looking at me like, yeah, man, I could tell he was like, he wanted to show his joy, but he was like, and they pulled me up. He's like, dude, he's like, hey, man, good play, but don't, uh, that's our guy, man. You can't, you can't, you know what I mean? You can't make a name with our guy, man. That's our starting yeah. back. But at that point, man, I went from third. Uh, I was, you know, guys who are there don't know this, there's levels into the walk on thing. So I was, I was like on a, you know, bottom, I was third string walk on. Then I went uh, up to what, second string, and they started putting me in more. And then right up, I got to first, and it was like, hey, man, if you keep doing good, you'll be able to suit up. Um, and uh, this, I guess the top was a 50, you get to go on the road. So they would, yeah, they would, they, they, they would play yeah. against each other. Then one guy, he, he – and it, 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 after they would go up and get their jersey, they would kind of – they would kind of get onto, like, the regular roster. You know how this works, but the guys would yeah. don't, don't know how yeah. it works. You would kind of – it's a sin of to play good. So if you walk yeah. on, like – you got to grind to get up there, man. The guys out there just watching, man. High school guys maybe watching, man. So you always get looked at. And again, that stuff right there, man. Again, if I would have did that four years earlier, man, it could have been it could have been a little bit different for me. But I didn't happen. I took responsibility for that. I didn't play as hard as I could have played in high school. And um, you it just you know what I mean that's one of those, it's life lesson, man. So you just yeah, that's it. That's, that's what life is about. <laughs> Learning from your mistakes. Yeah. That's it. Like you know what I mean. You just gotta grow from it. Ain't yeah. We all. I mean, like I said, I could have worked out more in high school. Yeah. I could have, you know, because I, I, I look back at my, the things that I needed to work on, my father told me at a young age, but yeah. that's just dad. I yeah, hate yeah, yeah. dad, but, <laughs> and then they were the things, you know what I mean, my hand strength, my quickness of exploding off the ground. He always told me that. I'm like, oh, what that got to do with anything? Yeah. And I go back to the other things I need to work on, you know? So, like I say, sometimes, like I say, that was my goal to always, it's still in, in every player that I had the same stuff that was still to me through every coach, my parents, you know, look, do this, do this, do this. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you can see greatness in a person before they can see it. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, and it's about pouring in. Like, we got to, like, you pour in, you pour in, you pour in. And like, oh, not every time they're not going to see it. Right. Every time they don't go that right path. But if you don't, then you never give them the opportunity. Yeah. You know so it's a must. Yeah, speaking of that, actually, the one one weird thing, man, you kind of because we were just talking about Daryl, man. Daryl, um, he was he's one of those guys, man. Again, at that time, again, because I wasn't getting a, I, again, I know why I was because I wasn't, I wasn't. You can't as a player, and I know as a coach looking at now, you can't go hard two or three times out of ten in practice, and that and, and in practice, guys, that's where I didn't realize you guys are really, really watching guys because again, you, mm -hmm. you you know practice how you play, play how you practice. That's a real yeah. thing, man. So you, if they coaches see you taking a playoff, you can't trust a player that is going to commit when you need him to commit out there. And that, again, I know that's what it was for me. But um, I remember one time, man, me and Daryl, um, we had a, a weird relationship, man, because we Daryl was cool with me when he wanted to borrow my uh, my, my CD player listening to Hot Boys or whatever, right? <laughs> and we, we used to talk, man, and everything, man. But like, you know what I mean? It was like Daryl kind of realized, like, he, like you say, he's smart. He kind of know how people are and everything. For me, I wasn't scared of people, man. But at the same time, there was like that, you know, that that um, that that point where it's like, man, I know how far I'm going go in this situation. I'm willing to fight. But at the same time, it's like Daryl is one of those guys, man, where like if need be, he's going to go to the escalator to the next level. We we all knew that or whatever. So it's like, like man, I'm going I'm to get into it with this guy, man. Is he going to carry over out the field? So we got into a few slap battles or whatever on the field and stuff like that. Then we would talk. Off the field, and one thing, man, it was just me and Daryl in a in a, in a, in a hallway, uh, going to coming from the bathroom. And one day at the practice, man, I think it was one of those days where he even Daryl seen it, where he seen me make a play, and then the next play I'll be like, ah, whatever. And he was like, he yeah. was like, he was like, man, he, just me and Daryl, nobody else. There wasn't no crowd, so he wasn't really making a scene. He was like, hey, man, he was like, dude, you big as shit, you got the physical thing, but he was like, man, why you ain't uh, you need why you ain't going hard all the time, man? Like just me and Daryl. And he was—he was. He was Daryl Dar yeah. was angry at me. He was—he was like, like he was—he was talking and he was angry. He's like, dude, man, you—you—you you, you can be like that guy, man, but you ain't doing it all the time. And I guess he got the, you know, I'm like, and that's for a player to to starting quarterback who went, don't. I mean, he, he ain't worried about. He going to play no regardless. So for him to care about uh, another guy who he, some guys just honestly, I mean, being honest, man, some guys play on the team. They just ain't for every reason got that athletic ability. They ain't got that that drive or whatever. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't got it, and let's let's not be uh, you know fake about that. But 
he kind of seen something in me that I ain't seeing myself. And after that, man, I did yeah. step it up more. You know, and, and, I, and I, you know, again, I was like, hey, man, I'm not going to do this. So in this, this the rest of the time I got left, I'm going to do this or whatever. I think I um think it was we we forced a fumble. I was, like you know, I fell on a fumble, got that thing back or whatever, and scored on there. My only time scoring in high school and everything. Mm-hmm. And and um, it just kind of I got it was too late to, I guess, mentally get into it. But again, man, Daryl, this Daryl saying that to me, man, was like this guy sees the, you know, a player sees the potential, and I don't even see it. Which kind of validated me, like I know I'm, 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 I'm a little bit better than average, but yeah, man, he's seen it, and he was like, yeah, man, do you, you playing? He, in, in short, he was like, dude, you being a bitch, man. That, that's that, he was. He had a way of putting yeah. things. One thing he was, a, he was a, he was a leader. Yeah, you know what I mean, and, and every great player are not all leaders, right? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And and like I and. We got kids like Mark Hicks. Mark was a leader. Man. Sterling was a leader. Yeah. You know, they they kids who, because a great player, a great player is not all about what they do. Right. It's right. about how you make everybody around you better. Right. You know what I mean? How how, how do you pull pull this person up? Like I remember dealing with Mark. Mark, like I think maybe his sophomore year on. Every time somebody would run hard, I would make him run extra, and he thought that I was picking on him. There. And one day, Mark, he left practice. I quit. He left. I said, no, it's home. So he left. You know, and the funny part, we got up in the office, right? You know, a, a coach fast. Hey, 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 son, um, uh, you better go get his ass back. <laughs> I said, coach, don't worry about it, coach. No, I, 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 coach, you good. Don't worry about it. So by the time I got home, yeah. I had like 15 messages from Mark calling, you know, hey, you know, I'm sorry. So and he wasn't telling me the one where. I think by his senior year, his shoulder, he needed show, his shoulder was messed up. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He played how he played. So he would crush somebody. He would come to the sideline and, and I'd be looking at him like this. Who am I putting in? And he would look and he'd go back in the game. So he did it like twice. But at the, at the third time, he just said, Come, it's no point me coming over there and telling you my shoulder hurt because yeah. you ain't gonna take me out. You know what I mean? But it made him turn it up to a whole nother level. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's that's, that, that, that's the, the the greatness of a, of a player is is you got to learn how to play through pain. I said, Mark, you ain't doing you ain't doing them. I ain't did. You know what I mean? I'm never gonna be that coach who try to put kids in positions or do things to them that never happened to me. Right. I've been through that. I know you. I know that pain you're feeling right now, Mark. I know you. You can't lift your arm. It's tingling. I know. And guess what? Who am I gonna put in for you? Yeah. You look over there at the sideline and you know what I mean. And that's it. <laughs> And like with the running, I would do all that to him because I said, I said Mark, if a defensive lineman missed a tackle, who got to make a tackle? Me. If a linebacker got to make a tackle, who got to make, make a tackle? Me. If they get the secondary, who got to run them down? Me. I said, I said, Mark, wait, I didn't make you great. That's something you want. You want to be great. You push to be great. That's your choice. Now you got to do to be great. You got these are things you got to do. Yeah. And that's, that's just part of it, you know. Yeah. Same thing. Like saying, I remember he might be the only kid that I, I allowed to not really warm up like everybody else because he was just different. Like he would walk around, it, it, it was a mental thing where he would walk around and be like, Oh, they think I'm a bitch. Oh, they think he was just, <laughs> and I walk by and say, Yup, yup, they sure do. Yeah. <laughs> so he would walk around, so he'd go by the goalposts, he'd be crying. He'd be but that's part of him getting into his. Wherever and when again, because he matter of fact, we would sit in the locker room, go through a pregame, so going through special team, he would sit against the wall and hit his head against the wall, boom, 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 he did a whole time. And then one time, our uh, coach Jenkins, which was our academic coach, she said, No, Kurt Sterling, she stopped him, and he had a good game that game. He played well, but it wasn't a Sterling type of game, right? So that, I said, Coach Jenkins, if you want to hit his head against the wall, let him hit his head against the wall, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and just destroy people, you know. So, like I say, my thing is, the great ones, you got to find a way, and he will always challenge everybody else. You know what I mean? I remember we was playing um that year we were in states, mm. so we are uh, uh, we came in. Oh no! So sometimes, what y'all didn't understand is, so sometimes in practice when we run, we used to run a lot, that would always be the plan coming in. Like I would just be looking for anything y'all do wrong, just so we can go run the hill. So. <laughs> So it probably it wasn't nothing you all could do to get out of it. Nope. I said. So we was 
And with that old that state championship team, the old six team, we ran them so much that they were so in shape that the hill didn't even affect them. So they run the hill, but they still laughing and joking, but they like they run it, they 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 run it hard. So I like, oh, you think it's a joke. So we just left. All the coaches, I said, we gone. We all left, went and practiced, went up in the office. So I'm thinking, all right, man, these jokers go down to the field, run through the special, they go through the whole practice themselves. No coaches. Everything, the whole practice, bam, 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 go through the special team, go through the offense, go through the two-minute drill, go everything. They come up there, you know what I mean? So I said, uh, they, we, we, we played on a Saturday that day. That was a Friday. So Saturday, we come up there. Usually I had their they'll hang their jerseys, their socks, or their locker. I just threw all – I didn't give them socks. I just get put the jerseys in the past in the cart, put it on the hallway, went upstairs. Still, because it, it's, it's the mental, you know what I mean? I got to I gotta, gotta get inside your head. So we go upstairs in the office. You know, Sterling came because he was always a spokesperson for the team. He come up there and say, Coach, um, and this is where I knew that I had him. He said, Coach, um, are we getting a bus for the game or should we just start trying to find rides over there? <laughs> I don't care what you're doing. We're going to make it to this game. Yeah. Like, y'all, y'all, can miss, y'all can walk out of practice. Y'all can do whatever y'all, but it was all so we get over there and we, we blew pads now, but it was it was all of all of it, it just just a mind game. You know what I mean? I gotta see how mentally strong are y'all. You know, when it came to defense, like he used to call all the D like he used to probably one of the only kids I allowed to call defense, but he thought like I thought. Mm. I saw. So he would make all the checks and calls and different things, and it'd be stuff I was ready to call, and he would already call it. You know what I mean? And that's when you when you when you bring up these kids of greatness, like Mark. Mark called that defense. You know what I mean? Because he sometimes they see things that we don't see. Right. I we was playing uh, at a court, uh, uh, buddy, but he was a quarterback. We was playing uh, Ligano the first game. Ligano was ranked in the state. You know, it was a close game, and he came over there, and Coach Wayne about to give him a play, and he said, "Coach, I got it." I said, "Wayne, let him go." Like he's seeing something because sometimes, like as coaches, we our angle is here. Right. Right. So, right. Right. We said they seeing something different. He called the whole drive and we scored. You know what I mean? And as a as coaches, when we instill and we put this greatness inside of a kid, you gotta let him go. Yeah. The point keep that leash. You train this dog perfectly to go outside and do everything, but every time you go outside, you got a leash on him. Mm. So you don't know what like are they really ready? Do they really got it? Because you because you still got that leash on it and you holding the leash, but the dog ain't pulling you. Yeah. So you got sometimes you gotta let that dog on the leash. And let them go. Yeah, a, a prime a prime example is uh, one of the things we just. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I'm not bad to turn this thing off, man. Prime example is the. I'm pretty sure you've seen the uh, the uh, heard about the last dance with uh, the, the joint. Yeah. With man, that that right there. Um, it did a lot. I mean, everybody's saying it did bear for Scotty and everything, man. It it it, exp- it 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 got all these new guys caught up on what's what. For me, it was cool Ooh. because I was I was born in '83. So I, I actually I was coherent around the, like like what ninety one ninety two. So I remember mm-hmm. I remember I mean I watch, I remember Great. watching all of that. So like to see it be played back and be part of history and see that going on. One thing I didn't know I got a lot of knowledge on it. I didn't know before Phil got to Chicago. He already had won two champions. I didn't know uh, Phil Jackson won yeah. championships. So I, like I said, it, between I didn't know that between the Knicks, Chicago, then then L A. Man, this guy got rings on rings. And, and, and uh, but one thing, the biggest thing, man, is uh, about uh, Phil, uh, Coach Jackson or whatever. Call Phil like I know him and everything. Coach Jackson, <laughs> even though I never played for him, there's still Coach Jackson out there, man. Jack, Coach, yeah. Uh-huh. So you know, one thing about Coach Jackson, man, was is um, you know, dealing with like Rodman, dealing with Jordan, who you know, you got the best guy in the, in the, on the planet. You got all these different guys, man. And they how they broke down. I mean, that that thing did it did for players. It did for you know. The Scotty part was like, hey man, if you ain't the guy, man, you 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 know you're the guy, but you got to kind of back down a little bit to to support the guy or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it did a that that documentary did a lot to show everything. What it did also it showed coaching, man, like how how important coaching oh, yeah. is. Meaning mm-hmm. that you know Phil can go coach for the the shit, man. He can coach Phil, coach Jackson, man, go coach for the worst team in the league. Probably won't win a championship, but he'll bring them up. And everything, and, and the fact you win, you win championships yourself. You win championships in Chicago. You go to Lake. You go to L.A. Win championships. That ain't a fluke, man. And then to deal with all, deal with all those personalities and everything. Deal with yep. Jordan. I, I didn't know. You know what they say? Like he sent Jordan out of practice. Like who sends Jordan out of practice? Coach Coach yeah. Jackson did. 
Like you, yeah, yeah. you let Jordan know that Jordan ain't bigger than the team, man. So like when exactly. you know what I mean that right it's there, man, yeah, that that right there show you the the coaching and everything, man, and, and all the different stuff, man. So on that, like on that, man, like what was your? I know it just ended and everything. You watched the whole thing, man. What was your take on the whole deal, man? Well, I'm gonna tell you this. It gave me a new outlook on Jordan. You no, know, right. for a while I had this, 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 this. I didn't like Jordan. Right. I, I love Jordan, and then when he kind of things kind of changed, I took a negative. But I didn't understand. You don't understand what he was going through. Right. You know what I mean? With the father, the pressure. Right, right, right. So I took it. I'm looking at him through my 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 human eyes. Like he, oh, he he think he did about. No, it's a lot. To, when you. That documentary documentary made him human to me. Right. You know what I mean? It made me respect his grind so much more. You know what I mean? How, how he pushed everybody in the team. Like, like we even with the Scotty Pittman, like I didn't see the negativity with Scotty Pittman. Yeah, me it was you know I mean, I, I, I like I say, dude, I love Scotty. Then at the doc through that I man, I still like Scotty was always my guy. You know what I mean? Because in basketball, I was in my mindset, I was never the Jordan of any other teams I played on. Right. School, middle school. <laughs> but I was a captain middle school, so it's different. Yeah. But I was never the guy. So Sky was always, you know what I mean? And it, 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 it just, I didn't see any negativity. Like people saying Sky was mad. What was he mad about? You know, but it kind of, this documentary showed me a lot of people don't understand sports. Right. How to be great. You know what I mean? Because I remember people was talking about in the, one of the first ones, with Oakley and Slap Pittman. Yeah. And I'm that story. And people were like, oh. Yeah, every, yeah, yeah, everybody blew that up. Yeah. Like, man, they just yeah, played this like, locker room, man. No, I said, oh, everybody who said <laughs> you never played a sport exactly. at a high level. Exactly. Because you come into college, you are the baby again. Yeah. Things happen. You come into high school, you are like, so if you never even played at, the, at any level, then I guess you would see a problem with exactly. that. Exactly. You know what I mean? But that is more so clear. It ain't like he punched him in his face. Yeah. You know what I mean? He like you know it, it was a it was it wasn't man, and, they, and they don't know have like they they going crazy over that man they really if they really got if they really had a camera in a locker room to see the stuff that goes on they be, they be flipping that's out man. <laughs> but that's how you got that when, when people when people start getting on there and texting them you see from there that they really don't understand yeah. what it you know what I mean and no matter what you go through whenever you at the bottom of the, at the totem pole you go through stuff yeah. but then you go. You know what I mean? And, and, and Scotty showed me. Only thing is, I wasn't that mad at him for when he didn't go in the game because I get what he was thinking. In my mm-hmm. mind, he was like, "Yo, I'm this the guy. My, I'm the guy. This is my time. I'm the guy, and you made a play for the next. Like when Mike was here, you wouldn't go a final a, a, a final shot play and give me the ball. So now it's my team. Why? Even though Kuko, and I'm glad Kuko was made to, to advance him. But I still understood what Scotty was feeling. You know what I mean? That would I have been mad at a, a player that did that? Probably. But I can't see me not going with the dog, my dog in a dog situation. Right. And, but that comes to coach. I mean, that, that was a great move by him because it worked. Right. You, you go back to Nick Saban when he made that quarterback change. I can't say that I would have done it, but he did it and it worked. You know what I mean? So sometimes as a coach – you got to do the hard thing that people don't want. I mean, I made some hard decisions, but that's different. Right, you know, right, right. hard decisions came from a, a younger kid outplaying an older kid and making that change. Like that's what it is. You know what I mean? But this was this wasn't even a practice issue. This was right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like I say, it, it, I love that document. It just made me really respect Jordan's grind. Mm. I mean, because he he was great, and he put like people how he talked to people, and how you gotta he was pushing buttons on people to make them turn their game right, up. Right, you know what I mean. It wasn't they they all men, so like it, it's different if he, you know, what I mean, he ain't walking around spitting nobody's face, or you know what I mean. No, he he was turning people up. He wanted to make sure you got it. Yeah, yeah, he, man. When he the current uh, situation. When they, when they fought, when he, when, he, when, he, when he, and Kara swung back on him, he punched Kara. I, I re, that's that way of saying, okay, this boy ready. Mm-hmm. And look at games where he he kicked the ball to Kara in situations where he would usually shoot it. it. All went back to when he stood up to him. Right. You know I, mean? I know he ready. I know he got me. Let's go. And like I said, anybody who don't don't respect it from that view, 
that just shows that your level of yeah was exactly. low, yeah. limited. Any, I mean? Anybody who watched that, like uh, for me, I watched it from again being a you know a high school player, then a college player, and then like so, uh, th- and then you know I watched it from a player aspect, and then you watch it from mm-hmm. a player coach aspect. So mm-hmm. those guys, man, we're all gonna get it different. Like you say, exactly, man. When that I seen when Charles Oak that light, light, light hardest <laughs> tap on the face. Like that, I didn't. I didn't even think that. I didn't think about that to the next. Because you know, ESPN is they don't got no sports, right. so like they they talking about the last dance. Like that's sports now because they ain't got nothing to right, report. Right, right. So like I'm like, dude, they breaking out every aspect of it. And then Charles Barkley in there, you know, I love Charles, man. He's like breaking down things and whatever. And everybody's it's like it's cool to see everybody come out of the woodwork and like you know, what I mean, it's like a drama, mm-hmm. but it it's not a drama because it's real life. But a lot real of life. Like, like a lot of stuff. Like I didn't, I actually didn't know uh, that Scotty. Um, that, you know, back I watched that. I watched that final, but I, I was young, yeah. so I just remember you know Kukoc making it, but I didn't know that Scotty was on the bench. Right, and then, and then so right. I'm pretty sure the announcer said it during the game, but I didn't. I'm, you know, at, as a young kid, you just yeah, watching the action. Yeah, because I remember that game, but yeah. I, I don't. I, I didn't remember yeah. it happening like yeah. that. You know what I mean? But and then, then, and then, and then the, the, the more respect for Scotty and, and Mike. The one thing I under, people understand is Mike knew. That he needed Scotty. Right. And that respect right there was bigger. Because I always used to think that, you know, when, when Mike retired, I'm like, let's go, Scotty. It's your time. You know what I mean? And Scotty still did well. Right. You know, when Mike came back and just, they just worked. They was yin and yang. They right. worked so right, right, right. You know I mean, and, and sometimes when you have them great combination of players, that's like, remind me of uh, uh, when I, we had Mark, a uh, middle linebacker, had James Hall at safety. Them two just worked so well together. You know what I mean, and that's how, that. That's remind me of the Mike and uh, Scotty. So when it came down to it, even that that last final when when Scotty back went out, you know what I mean. I'm looking like, oh man, come on. you got what well, Mike told him. That's being great. You do more for us on this court than you could be on that bench right now. Exactly, and, and that's the whole point. And, and, and Scotty still because I've had I'm throwing my back out, so I can't imagine. Oh yeah. And he's a tall, and there. he's a tall guy too. So he got that that yeah. bigger torso and everything, man. Woo! So so like I say, the respect level for, for Sky. Like yeah. like I say, see, and I, I read something the other day where it says Sky was upset about the series. I don't know what part what made him upset because it showed you exactly how I always knew you were. You was a great player. You understood your role. You you was humble. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need to score forty. You score forty. If you needed to rebound 25 times, like you did everything that you supposed to do in the situation. I have I had no issues with that documentary at all. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Scotty lost like I don't know. Like you said, it's the cat we call them like an MMA uh martial arts, you call them the casual fans that like they, they get online, they read the comments, now they know what John Jones is gonna do and all that stuff. I'm not sure if we follow MMA and stuff like that, but yeah. it's like they got the guys who just got they just they not they don't again being that I practice actual martial arts and everything. When you're watching with some guys, hey man, I would do this deal. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. You would, you, <laughs> you wouldn't do that right now. Because trust me, I've been in that situation where you're about to pass out and somebody's choking you, and you get out of it. Sometimes you don't. You tap out. But uh, it's the guys on the sidelines that don't really know how it goes, man. But Scotty, to me, mm-hmm. Scotty didn't lose any stock. To me personally, if no. anything, he gained because that he gained exactly when it's back. That back part, like man, dude, I don't know, Ooh. man. I, I don't know about you, man, Ooh. but. Watching that documentary, especially with even when Jordan started like tearing up, man, that that thing was like emotional for me, man. Like as a player, you put yourself in that situation, and that's the difference mm-hmm. between us as players of a sport versus a, a a casual Netflix person watching it who just got off work and bored or whatever. Um, that thing, man, like it, it just it, it was, man. I, I just wanted to play. I don't even play basketball. I played one time, but I played one you know, summer league, but. Uh, it just makes me it, it, it is as a I, I pull motivation from everything I do sit down and watch, and that was like man, it was like dude, man, like that that was so motivating, man, to see that again to me personally. Like I said, you sound like the same Scotty and losing his stock, and I'm glad they, no. they I'm glad they uh they ended it like that because they kind of harped on Scotty being hurt mm-hmm. and played it up because they could it seemed like they were trying to find a, a, pro, a protagonist antagonist type, type thing, and then Rod, yeah, Rodman yeah, yeah, was yeah. like your neutral guy. He was like man, whatever. I'm gonna go get these yeah. boards. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be in W O. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And Phil and Phil again, man. That uh, again, when Scotty sat on the bench, and then it was like Phil was like f him, 
And I was like, damn. Like Phil was like Phil was, you know, in that mind. Phil could <laughs> Phil didn't have time to worry about feelings right there. You couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't. I get I understand as a coach, I man, that 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 that's gotta be your mindset. You draw the play up, because he drew the play up in his mindset, this is what it's gonna take for us to win. Right. You know what I mean? And I get like I said, I understand Phil's side, I understand Pittman's side. Right. You know what I mean? The the person in the whole documentary that I guess had the roughest time, I think the roughest time was Cool Coach. Yeah. Yeah, he well, he yeah, was yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was that dad going, man, I don't even like to say that yeah. dude name. That that gym. Yeah. Like, like he, you, 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 you. And I get like he was mad at the uh um uh, I get why Scotty, when when Mike said Scotty being selfish, and people was talking about, oh, you don't understand his money. Mike was not talking about the money side. He was talking about handling your business, whatever your business is, when right. it's time to it's time to play. Right. Because Jordan, well, Jordan had a bunch of stuff I, outside of there, and he still yeah, still made it happen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I get that part, but I I, I understand why Sky was mad, but I get why he made why even when they told him not to sign that contract, I get it. Right. When you don't have, when you come from the dirt, exactly. Yeah. You just look. You need. I need longevity. I need money. I got because I got to take care of all this. Even though it wasn't a great contract to sign, but that the G yeah, you he could have easily fixed that a long time ago. Mm. But when you are a short little piece of, yeah, man, they try, they try to, they uh, try to, you know, again the ESPN thing. It was like you know everybody's giving Cross a hard time and stuff like that. It, it man, like that guy clearly. And then you know the way they, the way they picked on him and Jordan was like, hey man, we about to do practice and everything. And they kept going at him like, dude, that right there. When the players, you know, and this, this is pros. So we talking about you know guys who already went through all high school, college, all that stuff. They're pros. Yeah. So their 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 mentality is gonna be different. They gotta be like that to to maintain and stay at that level. And like Jordan mm-hmm. say, man, if Jordan was like, hey man, if you can't take me in practice, man, you ain't you ain't gonna take Charles Barkley. You ain't gonna take. Yeah, you, you can't deal with you can't deal with the Knicks. Yeah, so, so uh, you know they people again outside looking in, they're treating like the pro guys, like you know pick up uh, B and B L stuff like nah, These are pro guys, man. Like you you. They're, they're getting paid the millions of dollars. They're making billions of dollars for these guys and stuff like that. So they didn't, again, it was like, oh, man, Jordan, they should have been more grateful and stuff like that. Maybe, but, man, you can see, I mean, I, I don't know Krauss, man, but, you know I mean? I don't know how they painted it, man, but he went, that didn't look good for him, man. But I, like I say, that's what it was. Like, he, he was just, he one of these people that wanted to be the athlete. Right. He, they said, he, uh, and he never was. Yeah. So he wasn't getting the credit that he thought he deserved. Right. So, so it, it, he could st- he could take back a seat to players. He couldn't take back seat to Phil. Right. So Jack, that, that's what hurt him. Like, nah, man, forget. It. I just take. I just sit behind Mike and Scotty and them. Yeah. I ain't sit behind you. You know what I mean? So his mind said, like, this man done won you three championships. How can you turn around and say um, you ain't coming back? Right. Like. Give me the rhyme or reason of what sense that yeah, really man. made. It was so blatant, you man. You even say that. It, it was, but the fact that you wanted to be the guy so bad. Yeah. Like, and I would tell you, a lot of short, stubby people have these complexes. Napoleon, in life said, Napoleon, Napoleon, Napoleon complex? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like I say, you, you, you. And that man hands down destroyed your greatness. Because you think of the Celtics. Like each, each dynasty was able to lose it on a court and pass the torch. Right. And the Celtics passed to the, 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 the uh, Pistons. The Pistons passed it. You know what I mean? Passed it to the boy. It, it was a it was an actual a uh, passing of the torch. But he didn't allow that to happen. You know what I mean? Because they Chicago should have been able to lose it on the court. Mm. I think one another. I think they could have won one, at least one more. Yeah. I don't know many more, but they at least could have won one more. Yeah, they would have cut that team together, man. They would have, they would have, yeah, they would have made, they made it happen. Yeah. And everybody said they was gonna come back. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But you was so arrogant, and you was so, you know what I mean? And and then find out that the owner said that he told Phil, but Phil, Phil made Phil, he did the right thing. Coach Jack, like, uh, why I put myself back in this situation right. when you got somebody who, who's out for you? Right. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's crazy, but like I say. Power, giving power to the wrong people is a dangerous thing. Oh, yeah. yeah I've dealt with that in, in education. You know what I mean? The wrong person got power, and no matter what you do, you're not going to please them, so they're going to try to attack you 
no matter you're doing everything right, you're saving kids, you winning, you're doing everything right way, but it's just, because, it's just something they don't like about you. Know, like, yeah, because you because some people everybody wants to be a star. So when you get in a certain position, you expect that that position will make you a star. No, right, a star, right, right. you can be a star and be at the bottom of the barrel. You know what I mean? You can be at work at McDonald's and you can be a, you can be a uh, just a clean table guy. But you got a star, stud quality in you, it's going to show. You know what I mean? And that's what people don't realize is not position doesn't make you great. Right. Great comes from within. You know, and those that don't understand that, they try to stay in that position like he did. Because, you know, every, every time he talked, he was always talking about it's not players or the coaches that win. It's, it's the organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that, listen, that, that was, man, Drew was like. Ain't <laughs> no out there. Yeah. Organization ain't making no buckets. Organization ain't making no sub. Organization ain't keeping Dennis Robin under control. Yep. Okay? So, nah, play your position. You could have sat back and smoked your cigars and just continue to be great. Yeah. But your was, I built this. I'm going to show you I can build it again. Yeah. So again, on, 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 for that thing, man, like I say, on the uh, I'm gonna wrap up here in a second, man. But the mm -hmm. uh, the um, the again, outside of the sports aspect, again, the, just the the light, it was a life. Cause I, again, I take everything, I, everything I do, sit down and watch, man. I try to take life value, life, uh, you know, value out of it. And it, and, mm -hmm. and even you know, that thing taught me, man. Like you can, have, I mean, you got you got to have an ego in, in certain aspects, but you got to learn when to kind of pull it back and and assert it. And uh, mm -hmm. one thing is like with me, man, like that guy is like you get you get oblivious to like the goal or whatever. You got your own thing going on. And like for him, man, he just oh, in short, that it was so blatantly obvious what he was doing, man. It was ego driven. And like, you know, they yeah. said it. They pointed it out in a documentary. Yeah. And it wasn't like slander. Yeah. It was like, hey, man, this, this guy. Just, <laughs> and they showed the picture of him sitting in the back of the bus or in the middle of the bus. And he just the look on his face like and, and Jordan over there, they were talking and partying. You just see, like, man, I got all this money in the bank, and I'm still unsatisfied because and still, uh, yep. I'm five four terrible. and everything. Yeah, yeah you, you unhappy with yourself. You yeah, know what I mean, so 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 you inflicted that on everybody else. Yeah, so that, that's telling you a position and money don't bring greatness yeah. and don't bring joy. Yeah, and, he probably, and probably that respect right there. He probably figured because he's a GM, like you know, when Scotty was, you know, Scotty had, you know, they said Scotty was going in pretty hard and everything. Um, he should have been. Yeah, and it's, it's like you, you're not. He probably thought that a position. Was going to gain respect, and I went in the military. That's one of the things too, man. It's like you know, you, you're men. Yeah, one guy is higher ranking to you, but at the end of the day, you're still you're you're grown men. So when right. you, when the guys that all the guys respected me because yeah, I would outrank guys in the military. But at the end of the day, when it got when there was an issue, some some leaders will, or some guys or quote unquote leaders they would give them paperwork. We call it they would just write them oh. up. I would right. take I would take my guys outside and man to man, hey man, I'm a E five, you're an E two. We're men. Let's talk. What's going on? And then after that, man, they had respect for me. They did whatever I That's asked, crazy. and they their supervisor. They would kind of like blow them off. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, hey, man, you can't, you can't give this dude paperwork and have him sign it and think that's going to fix it. You got to talk to him. You got to say, find out what makes it, what, what makes things change. Yeah. Like, but people don't realize, like I say, suspending a kid or putting the kid off the team, and you know, all that's not always the answer. Yeah, yeah. I, I spent time as a. Uh, I was a behavioral third uh, and behavioral at a, at a school. Mm -hmm. And when I was athletes that got, got in trouble in class, I would make them do push ups. They would do push ups <laughs> until the pre was over with. And then when the one time was like, um, I don't think that's fair that you don't give these kids the athletes in school suspension. I said, Well, do me a favor. Look up how many athletes come to my office that get in trouble again. And she was like, Oh, and she went back and she went through all the data. And came back, and, and you could see a look on her face. I said, yeah. "It's not about it. <laughs> the punishment." It, it, when you want something to happen, you gotta you gotta do stuff to get changed. Right. Sending these kids in school suspension ain't gonna do a daggone thing. Right. It's, it's a break from class. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But but doing these push ups for this whole period, oh, you can it up for the next three days. So when you think about academic class, you are gonna be like, "I'm gonna go ahead and chill." Yeah, man. You know I mean? So like I say, that, that, that's what it's about. It's about getting results. Shit. You know? Shit, every kid, I mean, every coach should be a goddamn behavioral therapist, man. When you get like well, after <laughs> after all these years of dealing with all these guys, man, and then like it's probably now when you deal with your own kids, like man, this is this is because you already know you already know like you've been around so many kids, you already know the tricks, you already yep. know you already know what they're gonna say before they say it, man. And then like you know again like with my own kids, again I, I'm a I, I never really been in those positions as a coach, but it's like 
it's like seeing a seeing a, 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 a you, you see him grow up, man. And it's like you yeah. know what he's doing before he does it because you you've done it or been around and everything, yeah. man. And then getting him there. So my wife, like with my kids, um, they're they, I don't it's g- genetics is real, man. Like genetics, oh, yeah. genetics yeah. is like I, I didn't you, you you don't see it until you have your own kids. <laughs> Like, dude, that guy, like, he's doing, the guy's doing handstands and he's running. I can see my my second uh, son, dude, like, he already, his traps and everything already, he's only, like, two. And you can see this, the muscular, I'm like, bro, like, this, so, like, I know he, he's, he's going to be the, he's going to be, like, the, what, the mezzo. My other was going, he's going to be, he's going to have a more wiry, tall frame. And then the girl, okay. she's, she's like, you know, baby, she's, she's, she's all, you know, the baby, so they look like the little, Pillsbury Doe baby right now, <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, but yeah man, you see like this the grip the the hand strength like my first one, uh, he broke the cat's tail, and uh, he uh the doctor was like nah he's only one I'm like dude, I'm like he took the he he grabbed the cat's tail and he like they grab it he bent it yeah. up and I didn't know cat's tails or they they can oh you know, see so he broke the he, and he almost had to cut it off, so he uh. did X rays and the, the cat bone was like. One was, you know, it was like separated. And uh, so it grew back when his tail got, still got like a little kink in it. It never, you know, can't grow back and everything. But uh, mm-hmm. just the, the hand strength and like the, I got got him up here doing jujitsu and uh, just rolling around and everything. I'm like, dude, they're going to be uh, judo. I'm like, dude, I'm like, my wife think I'm joking. Like, they're going to be judo Olympians, man, because they're, they're Japanese. I'm like, they're going to, you know what I mean? I got, I got, the, I got the skills, but my thing is, and I now I know, man, it's like, I got to where I got. I'm not going to be one of those dads that's going to live through their kid because I, I see that all the time. But at the that's same it. time, I got enough mm-hmm. skills to get them up to the level to when they get to a coach or get to their they sensei, they got it. They that's got, it. they're going to, do. I got the mats out here right next to me, man. They're going to, I'm going to make them cry, man. They're going to be doing, you know, burpees. They're going to be doing all this stuff, man. I'm going to be doing it with them, yeah. stay in shape. But it's like, my wife's like, they want to do like, Japan is, they try to make the kid go one way. I'm like, you you got to introduce them to multiple things that way they can pick. Right, to find out where their niche yes. is. And yeah. uh, and they and also they do that they do this piano stuff. I'm like, no, I played trumpet. I was pretty good at it. But they do uh, the, they do this non confrontational stuff. Like they want to do swimming. Nothing against it. They want to do swimming, piano, violin. I'm like, ah, yeah. If they got if they got enough strength after judo and jujitsu, cool, you can right. do that. But I'm like, look, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, look. It's a give and take. Yeah, I'm like, look, I told my, I told my, uh, my buddy who's like, his sons are smart. And I, t- I told him this face to face because he didn't play sports. And he takes days off, man. And, I, and he probably watching this now. I mean, I've already talked to him about it, but it'll be cold. <laughs> it'll be cold outside, hot outside. He'll be like, oh, man, I'm going to go outside. I'm like, no, I'm out, dude. It's, 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 it's 20 degrees out there. I'm out there. It's 90 degrees out there. there I'm out there. And um, I'm yeah. like, bro, like that, that, uh, what you don't have is that grit. And we also did different things in the military. So I'm like, hey man, like when it gets hard, man, you can't be, you can't quit all the time, man. And that's what I'm telling her. The violin ain't gonna really do that for him. The violin right. practice ain't gonna really, you know, what I mean, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna put that in him. So I'm like, yeah, like I said, they, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, you, they ain't gotta be, you ain't gotta push to be professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sports is a must because the lessons, the, the lessons you learn from a sport, you can't find nowhere else. Can't, you got to in, the, in the violin practice or piano practice. You know what I mean? You you might find it in a band because even in a band you got different. They got your roles, yeah. Yeah, so that's something different. But like I say, you can you can give them. They can have that part, but you gotta have that, that sports world because it's like I say, it, it, it grows us. Yeah, grows us great ways. Is that toughness, man? You can't you can't you can't get it, man. Like one thing is you know like it's funny, man. Cause I, like I'm looking at you on the camera, man, and I could tell. And it's like one thing all football players got is that 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 lump right there, man. That that uh, <laughs> like all guys. And I, I don't know about you, man, but I got that take a knee knee, man, where my right knee is like I don't I can't, I don't got feeling in it because you know we take a knee out there in Emerson, is the, the dirt uh-huh. and the rocks. So my uh, my knee is permanently like is discolored, and it got like there's no feeling in it because we take a knee, take a knee, take a knee. So I'm like I'm yeah. pretty sure all ball players got those same things, man. We take a knee on the left or take a knee on the right. You got that your knee is kind of more tougher. They got the, you know, they got the, they got the, uh, you know, the, oh, one down the Ravens, man, McAllister, man, he had that big ass lump on his head, man. And uh, yes. <laughs> so it's like that thing, man, you get <laughs> from the, the, the tricks of the trade, man. But yeah, it's, it's man, ball is um that toughness, man. And, and uh, you know, getting that bell rung and getting back. It's like, like you said, a metaphor for life, man. You get knocked down, the cane. Uh, I, I remember the first time I ran into that, that Chris King guy. I'm like, man, what the hell, man? Because I, I hit him. 
I didn't drop, but I felt my life leave my body for a little bit. Yeah, I was, he was, I was yeah. Because he just, and he, all the deal, he just, I just came down the, the, the gap. He came up and filled it, and I just hit, we just hit heads. And I just remember holding on to him. I was falling back, though, and I just held on to him, man. Then I, then he kind of, as the play was over, he just kind of looked at me like, good play, man. <laughs> like, yeah, like, he was, he, he was special. Yeah. Like, I, I, watching him and Mark yeah. battle. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Mark yeah, yeah. and my Mark sophomore year. I mean, it was just like a, <laughs> it was like two Mack trucks, just all game, just bam. Yeah. bam. I'm sitting there like, yo, I just, like, that's exciting. <laughs> because, you know what I mean? Because and Chris Kane was the guy, and, and, and Mark was the upcoming star. You know what I mean? It was just, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, man, I, awesome. I, I miss it, man. I miss it, man. Like I said, it's one of those things. Again, guys who are watching who happen to be playing, going to ball, D1, D2, high school, man, just do just do it right now, man. Don't wait till it get you – know, I'm 37, man. You, it's always like you get older, you look back. And it, look we back. don't – again, what we don't know. Do? We don't know. It's like we see it's like, you know, you know, coaches and teachers talk down to us, giving a shit, man. But we didn't know you guys already been there. You already did all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And everything that mm -hmm. you're trying to – those hills and everything, man, like that hill, man. That hill, Ooh. that hill made that hill made or break broke you, man. And like that, that hill was uh, I, I, it, it didn't. Luckily, I man, every time you guys put me on it, I, I we we did it. We didn't. The the one thing, man, was the the you guys have us doing the backpedaling up the hill. That was that that was different, yeah. man. That was yeah, yeah. Don't, like I say, it's just. I can put a picture of that hill up. Oh, I'm gonna put one. I'm gonna put one up. Just, every every time I put it up, the comments just go oh, yeah. crazy. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put one up one there, man. But yeah, that, that hill is uh, you know, and it's like that is built into the school. You ain't gotta pay for it; it's already there, yeah. man. And then running that running that lap, running those miles, and then you go up the little ramp and everything come down. Like yeah. man, that that was a uh, Emerson man was of all this Emerson is had it was built for like they had the hill, they had the field right there. It's like you know, Steps, yeah, yeah. Every, every it, it's just a it, it's a perfect place, yeah, for torture. For, for, it's just a perfect, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Cause you had to, you had the small. Everybody wanted that small hill with the gate right there because you know that was a little hill. So you yeah, go, you go, bit, yeah, you go right yeah. there in the gate right there. Then that was like the little the the small punishment hill right there. Then but then Coach White was like, hey man, let's go around to that back hill. And you guys like, what do you mean? Like, hey, let's go to the hill, man. You'll see. And you know, yeah. Coach White said back back when when he was in school though, because you know it's another part of the hill where the trees grew up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a whole nother part like that. Because we used to, I got to put. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Miles up the hill. Yeah. And Aaron, rest in peace. I said, Aaron, they can say, when you take the tie back down, just roll it softly and stay with it. Man, he just spun the tie, and that tie jumped, and it went. And <laughs> I've never seen it again. That's not gone. Yeah, man. It's still way back in the back of the wood with, with a rope wrapped around it. Yeah, man. But, that, man, but Emerson, man, uh, you know, every, of course, everybody is biased towards the school they played at, man. Like I said, I didn't, you know, he played at Dunbar. You came to Emerson and everything. One thing I didn't know was straight at the back. I didn't. I didn't know Coach Pete was at uh, uh, Dunbar before. Mm -hmm. uh, before Emerson and everything. So that was like knowledge right at the top and everything. But and he, got, he was at Emerson first. Oh yeah. Then he, then he moved to Dunbar. He went to Dunbar and he came back to Emerson. And a little bit on Coach Pete, man. Coach Pete, he 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 went to Morgan, correct? He went to Morgan. And then he he, uh, he played. played he, a, he played. He went. He started. He played at Douglas. Mm -hmm. Then he went to Morgan. And he got he made it to the Jets. He won the last cut for the Jets, mm. but they they moved him to DB. Mm. Back then, you know, they wasn't having yeah, no black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they weren't they yeah, weren't going to do it. You know, look look look. Who says now? Look at us now. Yeah, <laughs> give us the opportunity and let us go. You yeah, know, man. and that, it's a blessing, man. It took a long time, but hey, saying that certain positions we can't play because we can't think. Cause we can show we we think just as well as everybody else. Yeah, man. It is, it Take is. the labels off. Let them go. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get you it. Know, I felt, I'm proud of what Lamar Jackson did. Yeah, man. Think about think about that. Right again. I'm a, I say I'm a rapper, man. But I got I got a guy sitting downstairs in my security camera. But yeah. the um like I did one thing when I left uh University of Maryland, um not being able to play because of my own doing my own thing again math like you said before, um I actually I um. In, high, in college, man, I failed 101 twice. They put me in remedial. I failed that, man. It was just like, I kind of, my in my mind, I was like, man, this just ain't for me. All the teachers mm -hmm. were speaking different languages. So not only math, but I got an Algerian teacher trying to teach me math and her her language. Okay, 
I'm yeah, like, then I, had, then I had a Korean that barely spoke English because Maryland was very diverse. Right, um, right, right, so, right, right. Yeah, man. So they and they they weren't really like you said when you got there. They respect you to already have it in more. So they weren't they didn't mm-hmm. have time to go back. It was no time for that. And uh, even the, rem- the remedial was just like a little computer thing, so you can click through it and and do whatever, man. So math ended up being my Achilles heel, and I and, and you know kind of now. I knew I could have buckled down, but I was chasing girls. I was on the team and all the stuff and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and um, but yeah, man, it, it was just, you know, it was just one of those things, man, where you, you look back at all, all the faults and stuff like that. You see how it is and everything. But, you know, it is what it is. You can't cry about it. You, you did what you had to do and everything, and you kind of got to move on and move from that. But again, man, um, again, one thing from you guys, man, is just the, the tenacity and everything I learned, I gained from Emerson. It's definitely a, a, a main reason why I'm successful now. I run the international business worldwide by myself, man. And everybody's like, how you doing? Mm-hmm. Like, I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning every morning. I do it. I do my paperwork, everything. I'm like, I don't need mm-hmm. – I'd rather do it by myself, man, than and it's where I'm at right now. And in Japan, whereas Americans that are military, they got obligations. And Japanese who don't really want to work with an American because I'm, I'm American, I'm a black guy, whatever. They don't, they don't see it or mm-hmm. whatever. So I make it happen. And when guys see my lot and see the organization, like, dude, how do you do all of this stuff by yourself? I'm like, dude, I'm from Baltimore, dude. I make it happen. I make it happen, man. I'm sorry that (laughs) Wisconsin ain't putting that thickness on your skin. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not saying it is easy out there because you got the farm boys out there that work on the farm and everything, but it's different everywhere. But we had all that plus, you know, the imminent violence, the danger, all that stuff, man, and multiple ways to, to, uh, to get in trouble, man. One thing I didn't do back then, is uh, I know that we used to win. We beat everybody. Guys out there who know Emerson, man, we had a good run, and uh, mm. we, we, were no, we were we were always the top. But the guys that go to the club, I never went to the club with those guys, man. Cause I'm like, dude, I know what's out there, and I was mm-hmm. like, man, and, and luckily none of our guys never got. They maybe got some scraps, and they see the guys in there, cause you know we play. Right. Guys who don't know we play against the guys, and the guys go to the club together, and they're like, hey, man, I I would we would have beat you if this. I'm like, nah, dude, you wouldn't have beat us no no matter what. You know, it's summer good. summer school. Summer school was um, so I used to I mean there was a dude Sheldon that played at Force or Force Park. It was Sheldon and some other dudes. They had a wide receiver dude had like dreads and like gold teeth and everything. Okay, okay. And um, we see him and, and, and everybody would wear their jerseys to summer to summer school. And, uh. Uh, and the, so you got the you got the Force Park dudes, you got the Northwestern dudes, you got because everybody goes summer school in one spot. Right. And so it was like all the football players in one corner talking about you know. It wasn't really the poly guys there because you know they 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 had their own thing. They did well in summer school, <laughs> but uh, you get all the city guys there in summer school. Like, yeah, man, how'd your game go? I heard it because it wasn't no back then. It wasn't no, it wasn't no Facebook MySpace, so everything was news, no, everything was that. newspaper. That. So we talked about the game and everything, man. But it, it was a good experience, man. Like you say, man, all that stuff. People were like, man, why? So why did you, you know, why did you do all those laps? Like, man, it was it was simply to to be a part of that team, to wear that jersey on game day. And do all mm-hmm. that stuff that again, people also looking in who listen to this thing, or watch them, man. They don't know like what what it what it does to to why why sports guys are like that. Is a of course there's being a, seen as a winner, but there's a, there's the team and being all that stuff, man. So again, man, you guys were I mean, just how I started it, just how I'm gonna end it, man. It's just like you guys were uh, detrimental uh, to to our development as as men and everything, man. And it's like you know, it, it, it always will be there. There's nothing that's going to change that. And again, I'm gonna try to hope all of the coaches out there watching. I'm gonna try to get Coach White on here and link or whatever okay. everybody else, man. I talked to him last night. Yeah, yeah I talked to him last night. Like, and uh, Sam, Sam is my uh, it's Chloe's uh, SAT teacher. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, Coach, I keep I keep my my family close. Yeah, and that's the thing, even with Coach Sam, man. Like Coach Sam, like the field, it was like he, he was a different guy on that field. He had that. And I, you know, I know Coach Sam played a little bit of pro ball too, so he had that, uh-huh. that that mindset where he would change it to let's let's do this. And then outside of the thing, I was I couldn't read him because he would talk to me like, "Yeah, man, how's <laughs> how's, your, how's your grades looking and everything?" And Coach Sam was one of those guys that he was like, "Hey, man, you Fire. know, he's like, stay on stay on them books and everything." And I got that scholarship mm-hmm. to Maryland, ninety thousand dollars. I got that mm-hmm. you know the scholarship to Maryland and everything. And then he was like, "You can't play ball." I'm like, I'm playing ball, so I couldn't play ball the first year uh, until the okay. and I walked right on. And everything, man. So, luck, you know, Coach Sam, like, because, he, you know, not saying that he kept it real, man. He was like, yeah, man, it's kind of too late to start getting things done. Guy, scouts looking at you at ninth grade and up. So, like, to, mm. to start getting it going in junior, sophomore year is kind of it's too late for you, man. So, he was like, he, he was told me straight up. He said, hey, man, make sure those books are good, man, and everything. And then I came back and uh, I walked in the gym. And um, 
I had my I had my uh, my my uh, University of Maryland my, my uh, practice gear on and everything. And Coach Shannon was one of the first guys. He was like, man, he was like, man, I I told you you could do it, man, and everything. But you just you just fucking did it too late. And I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so it was, I mean, I forgot what he said exactly, man. But it was pretty much around uh, those lines, man. Where he he was like, he kind of he kind of looked at me like, yeah, dude, you could have been doing that here. Could have been. You could have been doing he that here. Something. One thing is, like I say, he seen something in you. Yeah, and, and I, that's I, one thing. Like I say. When it when it's certain and that that's that's just being a coach. Yeah. Being a, we, we see something in our players before they see it. And sometimes it takes longer for them to realize it. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, yeah, sometimes they realize it too late. Sometimes they realize it on time. But that's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. It, it definitely, man. Every like I'm a, I don't know if you know, man. I'm a, I'm a pro uh, professional driver as well uh, here in Japan, mm. man. And that's one thing too is like I remember uh, like I didn't want to break my car because I was driving it. Then I was like, man, this you got to go. So I, I mean, I, I remember mm. I went in a particular people that was there, like, do you start messaging me and everything? Hey, man, you drove hard. And also, I drove eight hours uh, from my home to go to this race or whatever. And okay. uh, it's like one of those things, man. Like, I'm sitting at the line about to go. It's like, man, I got to go, man. Like, whatever the results are, you just got to put it all out there yeah. because if you if you have fast in it, 95%, mm -hmm. that, it could be somebody well, out there watching. That, somebody you, opportunity. Yeah, yeah, you, know man, so, you got to take advantage of every opportunity. Yeah, man. So it definitely, trust me, man. It, it definitely plays a part in that stuff, man. But again, man, thanks for the time and everything, man. We oh, we definitely. didn't even, we didn't even touch on. How, I mean, it was it's just so. I mean, it's so deep, man. We so many issues, like the Colin Kaepernick stuff, man. I, I follow you all your posts, oh, man. So I see all the guys on there, man. And like one thing about your posts, man, is like people don't like real, they don't like real talk and they don't, they don't, they want to, they want to be sugarcoated. You'd be like, Hey man, like you say about the, when the, when the kid's killing the kids, like, Hey man, like you said, and I, I didn't even realize like, like, dude, every dude does play, even if it's for two weeks, everybody in the city played on some team, man. Yep. Some team somewhere. Some kid that we want, that, that you ain't paying attention to, want to give them that love or a kid you sent away. Yeah. You sent them away from you and the streets picking them right up. Yeah. Yeah, man. And then you had some guys yeah. like you know you had you know like Al Speedy. You know, you had Al Speedy, man, who you know was fast as hell on the on the, on the thing, man. But then like now Speedy's living in I think Ohio or something like that, doing real good. Uh, mm. and, and uh, but you know he it was like that. Once you got him, you got him, man. And sometimes when you get guys off the streets, I wasn't in the streets at all. Then you got guys that like they were they they just every time after practice, man, it was like. You're doing good and building them up, and then the streets will take them down. And then every day, mm -hmm. it's that build up until they would miss practice, they would get locked up or whatever. And that's the yeah. again, that's that thing again that again coaches in coaches in Nebraska, Wisconsin. I keep picking on those guys because they're over there, but they just ain't dealing with that. You know, that's a different. Yeah. They ain't dealing and, with that. I man. think even coming to Delaware, coming yeah. to Dover, everywhere has they they had everybody got issues. Right, they just ain't street issues. Right, but they <laughs> issues, you yeah. know what I mean. So, I, like I said, me personally, I like to deal with issues that I can relate to. Right. You know what I mean? Like one thing about being in the city is I knew I knew what we was facing. Right. You know what I mean, I, I, I ain't – we're dealing with kids who might not have ate in a couple of days. Yeah. And not a kid who mad that, you know, mom took their car away. Like, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah like, if people don't know. Even, even think about, like, Wolf. I, when I first met Wolf, when I first got to Edmonton, I didn't know Wolf was going to practice, going to work, then coming back to school. Like, like I don't even know where he was sleeping because he was sleeping homework. I was like, "Boy, you can't keep sleeping in here." And he broke my story, there, and I'm like, "Yeah, man, yeah, yeah." And Wolf, that's, that, 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 that's that's real. Yeah, Wolf had Wolf. I, I didn't again. He, Wolf was one of those guys, man. When I, you know, being a teammate of him, man, um, I didn't, you know, he just I could tell. There was like you know there was something different with him, man. Like he had this mature, like his the his maturity level was was in a whole yeah. yeah. And then looking back as a yeah. man, like dude, he was Wolf was saying stuff in high school that that thirty five, thirty six year old dude start saying when he start realizing life. Like Wolf was deep yep. in high school, man. Like he you deep. know he he he, yeah. he he went he wouldn't you know at times he would like you know he, he would you know kind of act like us or whatever or kind of like joke, but he always had like that. That strong, the mind, lots, yeah, yeah. The strong mindset yeah, man, and everything, man. I, mm -hmm. that was, he was one of the dudes, man, that I now love. I love giving, a, you know, providing a crackback for that dude, man, and, and making him have that cut score and everything, man. So again, man, I just start. I was playing my role, man. I was like, hey, man, I ain't gonna be the guy, but I'm gonna help these guys do what they gotta do. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the yeah, thing, that's man. The role player, man. It's just and that crack crackbacks, man. That that's a that's a man. That that feeling when you run through somebody and they just fall. <laughs> And it, that, that, that's a man, guys out there. My deal, my boy uh, Dorsey. Uh, Dorsey was one of my guys. Oh like, uh, man, that dude was a, a hitter. 
And we just Yo, cracking. And like, about to be it. The door's like, hey, man, you hit that dude. I'm going to hit this dude. Like, all right, cool. Let's do it. We used to target yeah, yeah, dudes yeah. out there. Like, who looks scared out there? You can you can see from 50 yards away who who don't want to be on that field right now on the kickoff. Because that kickoff, Bro. that's the most violent part, I believe, man. By far, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> by far. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I loved it. I loved it, man. Like you, you get in that sideways stance, and you just like I, that's my guy. I'm going on that gap, no matter what. I remember one play, man. It was um, I didn't, I didn't actually uh, I remember actually because you were right there. It was you and Coach Sham right there, and I actually I went harder because you was right there. It was City, uh, and it was the guy was running the side. He was like tiptoeing. What I was trying to do was actually see if I could split the two guys, but I just hit him. I hit both defenders square. They stopped, and it, the guy ran right into the back of them and off. And I'm like, man, I didn't make the play. And you and Coach Sham was like, man, you was like, man, y'all was going crazy. But I'm like, I ain't do shit. He was like, but I ain't realize that I, the dude hit the defender, went out of bounds, stopped the play. <laughs> and, then I, and I can remember, man, I know I, I was like, I was trying to go so hard to actually, I wanted to hit both of them back into the guy. But it, uh, it, I just, it just stopped. But it, it, it was a loud pop and cool, everything. Man. And 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 everything went good right there, man. And you know, it, it's Get your job. Yeah, man. It was. It, I was thinking about that play all the time, man, and everything, man. But it, it's um again, man. It thinking about it, man. It, it's definitely you know give me it gives me energy. I'm about to go through my day right here and do some stuff and everything, man. It's just um the high school stuff, man. It, it was definitely not a waste of time, man. So again, man, I, I know you don't feel that way, but I mean, just to, for for a player to tell you that, man, it definitely I think it feels like yeah, validation sure. where. None of the moments on that field was a waste of time, man. I picked up every less every conversation that or any advice you ever gave to me, man. I I, I took heed to it, and I again I apply that to this day, to this very day and forever, man. So that's, that's, what, the, that's blessing, what it is. Right that's there, the best man. part so, about being a coach. That's yeah. it. It, it, that, it. Ain't about money. It's about that right there. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, that's it. Hey, man. I'm gonna get out of here, man. I keep checking my clock right. right here, man. It's hard to get again. I want to keep talking and everything. We'll, we'll definitely, man. I'll try to. You know, I'll, I'll try to bring. We'll do it again. Bring guys back in and um, give okay. other guys, man, and everything. So, like, this will probably air probably like uh, what's, today is what? Well, my today is Friday your time, so probably mm. uh, I'll, I'll mix this up and everything. Probably about tomorrow to be online and everything. So okay, I'll share it around, man. Right. But again, brother, thanks for your time, uh, man. Thanks, thanks for, for having me. Thanks for the guidance all and in, 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 in the lessons. And um, again, man, it's just uh, very thankful, brother, uh, to have you as a, as a brother, as a coach, as a friend, all that stuff, man. And um, just know that I ain't I ain't embarrassing Coach Jones's name out there, man. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody getting nothing over on me, man. So it, it's, it's uh, man, keep doing your thing, keep being great. All right, man, I love it. All right, man. But I'm gonna get out of here, man. I'll see you later, man. All right, man. Okay. All right, take care. All right, guys. It's going to be Don signing off of Pink with Style Massage Japan. Let's go ahead and make sure you guys go out there and uh, like, subscribe, and share, and do all that stuff out there again. Follow the page if you're listening this long or watch this long. Just go ahead and make sure you go you go ahead and like, like subscribe, and share. Just make it worth your time and everything. So, again, guys, it's going to be Don signing off from Massage Japan, uh, Pink with Style. See you guys later. Be safe out there and protect yourselves. But don't be scared, but protect yourself and everything. See you later. Down signing out.